podcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Hi, this is Leo Laporte, and this is my Tech Guy podcast. This show originally aired on the Premier Networks on Saturday, September 3rd, 2022. This is episode 1923. Enjoy. The Tech Guy podcast is brought to you by IT Pro TV. Are you looking to break into the world of IT? Get the introduction you need with IT Pro TV. And you get 30% off when you sign up at itpro.tv slash twit and use the code twit30 at checkout. Well, hey, 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 how are you today? Leo Laporte here, the Tech Guy. Why, yes, it's time to talk computers, the internet, home theater, digital photography, smartphones, smart watches, all that jazz, 8888. Ask Leo is my phone number if you have a question, a comment, a suggestion. If you'd like to talk high tech, this is your chance. 888-827-5536, toll free from anywhere in the U.S. or Canada, outside that area. Oh, just call using Skype out. You could still reach me. 888-827-5536. And it should still be free. Website, techguylabs.com, stores all the links to uh, all the stuff that you might be looking for. Uh, techguylabs.com. Uh, links, audio, video, all that stuff from the show, all that stuff. Techguylabs.com. Mike Sargent taking the day off. Did he say it's his birthday? I don't know. Maybe he's just uh, preparing, uh, as one does, for the Big Apple event on Wednesday. You know, you got you to gotta train up for that. Maybe that's what's going on. He's training for the Apple event. I don't blame him. It's going to be exhausting. Lots of... <laughs> I don't... I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of stuff to talk about. He'll be going down there to the uh, Apple campus. So uh, we'll get a report from him uh, next week about uh, what he saw. Of course, we think it's going to be. We think. You never know. You never know. App there are always these rumors, you know, from uh, Apple. And uh, I think the thing that happens with Apple uh, sometimes is the rumor isn't wrong. The rumor's right, but Apple changes its mind at the last minute. So, uh, you know, they could be sitting right now. They could be sitting on the, uh, you know, the iPhone 14 with, uh, I don't know, refrigerator built in. And, uh, and all the rumors would say, oh, they're going to do a refrigerator this time. And then at the last minute, like right now, they could say, yeah, maybe not. It's not ready, would be how they would put it. And so they don't do it. But the rumors are, and I think this is all fairly likely, that there will be an iPhone 14, an iPhone 14 Pro, an iPhone 14 Pro Max, and then there's one more, I can't remember. <laughs> the, the, there'll be two 6.7-inch uh, iPhones, big ones, big ones, and then uh, two smaller ones, each one in the Pro line. So the 14, maybe the 14 Max, maybe that's how they'll do it. We don't know. Nobody knows. 14, 14 Max, 14 Pro, 14 Pro Max. That would make sense. So, and, the, and the Maxes will, have, will be big, 6.7 inches. Better cameras. Uh, <laughs> a periscope lens, maybe, which gives you much better zoom. Maybe. I don't know. Um, we'll almost certainly see the new watch, including the new Apple Watch Series 8, including a pro version of the Apple Watch Series 8, which will, I don't know if they'll call it a pro extreme sport, but it will in some interesting way be bigger, better, and much more expensive, <laughs> breathtakingly more expensive AirPods as well. Okay. Boom. That's that. You know what? We'll talk about it on Wednesday. We will have the deets. Uh, on Wednesday. And uh, and Micah's getting to go down there. He got the invitation from Apple. So he'll be getting a hands-on experience with those. So I expect next Saturday he will be back to tell us all about that. You know, the big, to me, 
though, the big story these days is not from Apple. It's from the land of artificial intelligence. And I'm sure you've been seeing these images show up. I'm, maybe you've seen them in magazines or the newspapers. The idea, these are new, artificially generated images. And uh, it all started with something called Dolly 2, D-A-L-L-E, and the number 2. Dolly 2 from Google. Actually, I'm sorry, from OpenAI, not from Google. From OpenAI, although Google is part of the OpenAI initiative. Uh, they released in beta. It's, a, it's an AI research company that was funded by Elon Musk and a bunch of other people. Um, and they are doing all sorts of AI research. But the one that's really caught everybody's attention these days is this Dolly and Dolly 2, which you can go to uh, openai.com and sign up for, which I did ages ago. And there's a long waiting list, although the people who get it play with it and then they release their images and people go, wow. The way it works, you describe in text uh, a image, an image, and then the AI draws you some samples, and then you can uh, enhance it, expand on it. You can do something, uh, you can say, no, not that, more, more of that. It's very interesting. And, of course, the people who are really good at this have learned, in fact, I think this is the new kind of programming, they've learned how to talk to the machine. That's what programming is, right? What coding is. You write a computer program, you're talking to the machine, and then the machine responds. Well, this is a new kind of coding. And in fact, as AI, as artificial intelligence expands, I think we're going to see more and more of this kind of coding where you learn to interact with the machine in a more organic way. So I'm looking at a beautiful image, which is on the front of um, the OpenAI webpage. Created by Emma Catnip, <laughs> the Garden of Fiorm Falorx. <laughs> and this is the description. Now, you know, I, I would go in there and say, a, a beautiful garden filled with roses on the planet Mars. That's a pretty good prompt. That's what they call it, a prompt. And it would do something actually that would be pretty good. But the real talented people are getting more and more, they're kind of symbioting with a machine and, and, and they're getting it and they're going back and forth and they're starting to learn the language. So the Garden of Fiorm Falorx by, by Emma Catnip, this is the prompt. The Garden of Fiorm Falorx is artwork from graphic novel created for the band Plaid's upcoming release via Warp Records. A utopia, here, I guess this is the prompt. A utopian planet hosting the biggest electronic music festival in the world, in the universe... To start with this piece, I started with an initial image I made beforehand that I had... Ah, see, that's one of the things you can do now, and this is interesting. Artists can uh, draw something or provide a picture and then, and then say, okay, now elaborate on this. If you want to see some of these images... So Dolly started it, but there's many others now uh, that are playing the game. In fact, there's one you can download and use on your own computer... If you have enough horsepower, enough chutzpah, called stable diffusion. And uh, if you want to see some stable diffusion art, the best place to go is a search engine for, for stable diffusion images. It's called Lexica, L-E-X-I-C-A dot art. Lexica dot art. These images are remarkable. Maybe you saw John Oliver's last week tonight, last Sunday, where he played with a, another... Uh, popular AI art generation tool and ended up marrying a cabbage. It's a long, strange story, but that's what happened. <laughs> he ended up marrying a cabbage. Uh, it's very interesting to see what people are doing. And it's, and it's absolutely uh, good quality, I think. Here I'm looking at uh, a portrait of Jim Carrey on Stable Diffusion. Jim Carrey portrait, Shinkai, Mikado, Studio, Ghibli, Studio Key. They're giving it uh, prompts about styles. Uh, James Jean, Mark Simonetti, elegant, highly detailed, digital painting, art station, PixIV. And the computer is using all of this going, okay, 
Okay. I think I get your idea. Sometimes drawing something creepy and bizarre. Sometimes something quite beautiful. There's a bit of a furor because an AI art creation recently won first prize in an art show. The Colorado State Fair's Fine Art Competition. A guy named Jason uh, Allen, who's a president of a game, tabletop gaming company, created uh, this artwork and then, um, and then submitted it. He won. It was in the digital arts, so it was digitally manipulated photography category. If you see it, it's quite a quite a, a mystical, interesting piece, kind of a strange looking piece. He uh, he. It was printed. Then he printed on canvas. So maybe fooling the judges. I don't know. It's really made the art world upset. But guess what? Here, I'll read from uh, CNBC. Jason Allen was declared the winner, even though he himself didn't create the piece. This has enraged artists online. Enraged them. As Allen did not go by the traditional way or wield a digital paintbrush to create the artwork, he instead used another AI program called Mid Journey. I've been playing with that one, Mid Journey, to create the artwork based on a text prompt. He did take it, touched it up in Photoshop, upscaled it with Gigapixel. So he did some work on it. Uh, he admit, uh, labeled his submission to the State Fair as Jason Allen via Midjourney. Of course, the judges probably didn't know what Midjourney was because this is all stuff is all new, right? Is that art? Yeah, I think it is. But it's a new kind of art, a man machine or human machine created art. Now there's a new thing that Dali can do, which is called out painting, which is taking an existing painting. The OpenAI folks uh, use as an example Vermeer's famous girl with a pearl earring. And then they expand it to show the, what the rest of the painting could look like. Now, Vermeer never painted that. <laughs> but uh, now we can see the room the, the woman is in. I mean, obviously, completely fanciful. But it's all done in the style of Vermeer. It looks like it could be a continuation of the existing painting. That's called outpainting. What's interesting about this is how fast it's happened. You know, we've been sitting here for literally decades saying, uh, AI, forget it. It, you know, Siri never understands what I want. Those self-driving cars keep plowing into other things. AI's not, you know, it's actually been reassuring, hasn't it, for us as humans. Eh, AI, eh, it's not so smart. But now we're seeing the art created by AI. It's a little surreal, a little creepy, and yet it's pretty impressive. <laughs> and I think it's creeping people out. It's both fascinating, it's amazing, it's interesting, it's creeping people out, and it's, I think, here's the thing, the reason I bring it up, a look at where we're headed with AI. It's not AI all by itself. It's a man, human, I keep saying man, man or woman, person, machine interface that together creates something fascinating. And we're just starting to learn the language of the machines. Oh, boy. 80, 88. Oh, boy. <laughs> this is happening fast, folks. This is, this is out there now. 8888, ask Leo the phone number. TechGuyLabs.com, the website. Leo Laporte, the Tech Guy. Your call's next. <laughs> well, that's what's interesting, RTFM, about this. He says computers do exactly what you tell them to do. That's traditional coding, absolutely. This is not, ex this is, and that's what's interesting is you add AI to this. And it isn't exactly what you told them to do. It's, they're adding something. It is not deterministic as it used to be. They're adding some content, which I find very intriguing. No, 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 don't call that number. 
Don't call that number. I don't know what you're going to get, but it ain't Kim Schaffer, our fun angel. <laughs> Hello, Kim. Hi. 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 How are you? Good. How are you? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. Be <laughs> Not okay. Beachwood 45789. Don't call Beachwood <laughs> don't call 45789. <laughs> call 888. Actually, 8888 Ask Leo. Would somebody write a song? It's not, it's not going to be a good song, but would somebody write a song? You don't know, you know? what kind of musicians we have in our audience. <laughs> Pour some sugar on me, tech guy. No. You want not. Def Leppard to do it? <laughs> I mean, it's in my head. You know why? Because I'm going to see Def Leppard, Motley Crue, Poison, and Joan Jett on Wednesday. Wow, Hairband Central. <laughs> it's not my music. It's not my music. Well, it's my wife's that's music. what happens when you marry a younger woman. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, so it'll be fun. It'll yeah. be fun. Um, well, uh, I wish I was going to see Lady Gaga on uh, oh on Thursday. Is night. she in town? Yep, she's in San Francisco on nice. Thursday. Uh, we saw her in Vegas. Yeah, it was quite a it's show. Great show. Quite a show. So, who should I uh, pick up on the Let's line? Let's go here? to Mexico. Wow, Lars is in Puerto Vallarta. Oh, <laughs> make me jealous. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Kim. <laughs> Hello, Lars in Puerto Vallarta. PV Lars, I'll call you. Welcome to the show. Hey, thank you so much, Leo. Thank you for taking my call. So I have a Lorex black box DVR for security cameras. Okay. And uh, for the first time, unfortunately, this past week, we had a burglary. So Yikes. I take the files off the DVR and show it. And so I did a backup over to a thumb drive, and I noticed the file format was... Dot two six four, and then I thought, hmm, how can I convert that to something I can view? You probably don't uh, have to. I'm gonna guess. Oh. So I'm not sure why they call it dot two sixty four, but I, th but I'm gonna guess it's saying we have encoded this in H dot two six four, which is a very, very common, probably the most common video codec. So probably, I would try this first, rename the file, not .264, but .mp4, which is the common extension for H.264. Okay. So uh, try that and see if it works. What are some other extensions for H.264? Um, the Lorix, yeah, I'm, I'm, I feel like... it. Lorex should have in their manual. <laughs> exactly. I, call, I looked in their, their manual and I called tech support and they told me that my model um, LH014000 yeah, yeah, yeah. is now so old that there's no converter. I don't know um, the file format that this DVI is generating. So... The other the other option is to download a player that doesn't care what the extension is. Some players, you know, a lot of dumb players, a lot of places you might play it back on your computer or your TV will say, "Well, I don't know what this is if it's a, I don't know the extension." But but a, there's a player called the Video LAN client or VLC that will play back anything by looking at it and say, "Well, what is this? Oh, I could play it and it'll play almost everything." It's free from videolan.org, V-I-D-E-O-L-A-N.org. Yeah. Free and open source. It works on Android, iOS, Mac, Windows, it's Linux, it's everywhere. And it's actually very good at H.264. I think that may be, in fact, its favorite flavor. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> so I would I I would uh, I would just first thing to do maybe is just download Video LAN uh, client VLC and open up the file and see if it plays. I bet it will. And I'm sorry about the okay. burglary. Did they get a lot of good stuff? They did not. Luckily, we um, they just took some money. That was it. That's all what they're interested I'm, in. Nothing. Yeah. I'm glad you I'm glad you have the video. Maybe you can catch catch them. Great to talk to you, Leo Laporte, the tech guy, Scott Wilkinson, home theater coming up. Yeah, money. They just wanted money. Probably drug yeah, addicts, right? They, they, they just wanted to buy some some stuff. Leo, this is my first call, and I am, watch, I've been watching you and hearing you for so many years, and I'm so happy I got through, and thank you so much for what you're doing. Oh, my pleasure, Lars. Now, do you listen via uh, podcast? Probably. Yeah. yeah. I, 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 I listen to podcasts, but now today I'm looking at you live here. On the, oh, on yeah, the well, the live stream. 
We'll always yeah. do the podcast and the live stream. So if you're in Mexico and you don't have a radio station that broadcasts us, then this is the best way anyway. That's my to-go thing on my podcast when I walk the beach down here. Oh, I'm so jealous. <laughs> at least I, at least I'm virtually on the beach at PV. I love Puerto Vallarta. Yes, you are. Oh, we were Thank we were so down much. there some years ago, and I just it was it's so pretty. Did you are you native or did you uh, move there? I'm no, guessing. I'm a I'm originally from Denmark. I so lived I in guess. Southern California for 20 years, and then I moved here for nice. five years ago. Are you loving it? I love it. It couldn't be better. Oh, I'm so, so I'm so tempted. <laughs> yeah. As you might know, Paul Thorat, who does our Windows show, has just bought a condo in a, in Mexico City, which I think would be really yeah. fun too. But I want to be on the ocean. I want to be on the beach. Yeah, well, it's nice. Enjoy. Thank you so much for Take taking care. my call. Bye-bye. Thank you. I'll tell you what's hip. This cat right here, man, he blows a hip horn. <laughs> he is Scott Wilkinson, home theater geek. I love horn sections. I do too, man. Do they and ever somebody... use a tuba in a horn section? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, in fact, the Roots, uh, uh, Jimmy Fallon's band uses a tuba. Um, Stay Human sometimes has a tuba. I love that. that's actually a great sound because that it's bass horn, so it's a, oh yeah, it's a great oh, yeah. sound. Hey, I got to tell you, somebody in the chat room just hit me to a, a new a musician I didn't know wh who does incredible horn arrangements. A guy named Corey Wong. He's a guitarist, but man, oh man, he is so funky. I mean, he's up there with Tower of Power and. And these great horn bands, they just and they just play the bejesus out of it. It's great, <laughs> really good. Highly recommended. I was listening to him last night on my walk. This is not though the wind instrument segment of the show. This no, is no, the it's home true. theater segment of the. Well, yes, you might be wondering because I haven't said anything about this. Home theater geek Scott Wilkinson. He does a great podcast uh, for AVS Forum on YouTube. YouTube.com slash AVS Forum joins us every week to talk about big screen TVs. Yep. And surround sound. What's the latest, Scotty? I want to tell you, uh, I want to direct you to AVS Forum. I recently posted my home theater of the month, which is really, really good. One of the best I've seen. Not only because it's really high performance, but because the guy who built it did it all himself, except laying the carpets. That's the only thing he didn't do with his own hands. So you've been doing this feature for some time. Oh, quite a while, yeah. Yeah, and it's it's all people who have built their own... Not necessarily. There are some who have contracted it out, you know, and hired people to build it. Well, that's form. no fair. <laughs> <laughs> I like the people who do it with their bare hands. Yes, with their bare yeah. hands. And <clears throat> even most impressive about this particular build his budget what did he spend on it i've i've done home theater of the months that are 75,000 100,000 125,000 dollars people spent on this guy spent $25,000 see that seems like a Which, lot but i'm much but it's much more approachable isn't it it's much more approachable yeah. and when you look at the pictures and you, you where see are the pictures that, tell me where they oh, are oh right on the home page of 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 avsforum.com uh, right at the top, you'll see the July 2022. We're catching up on on, have, on some lost That's time. That's all right. It's all right. You only missed it by a month. <laughs> I, I got another two coming, and then I'll be caught up. Nice. But in any event, uh, right there on the home page, right up near the top, you'll see the July 2022 Home Theater of the Month. And you will see, well, first of all, it's exactly my kind of home it's theater. Kind of, it's, it's kind of not fancy. It's not like... It's not fancy. Yeah. It's not got all the Frill of France, Baroque, uh, you no, know. No, in fact, it's, it looks like it's 30% gray everywhere. Yeah, yeah, and dark gray. Yeah, exactly. And that's my kind of theater. I want, <laughs> you want, I want functionality. I, yeah. I want to, the, the room to disappear when I'm watching a movie. He's got carpet. He's got sound baffling. Uh, he does have at least very comfortable armchairs with cup holders. So that's that's well, a good Well, these are start. really nice, really yeah. nice chairs. Should be comfortable, but the movie should uh, should be the center uh, of Correct. attention. Yeah. Correct. Correct. And he he converted an existing garage into this room that Just had the actually right been size. used. Yeah. It, it's exactly the right eight size. Eight people. It had, yeah, eight people. 
And so I've got pictures on there of of how he framed it and how he the riser for the second row of seats he he is basically empty and he filled it with acoustic treatment to make it a bass trap because in any <laughs> oh nice <laughs> in any room you know you've got the bass frequencies can be really problematic and you need to kind of tamp them down oh it's so it doesn't he, make it bigger it makes it smaller correct okay shoot because i wanted to sit in the second row and feel the movie okay no no no, no. Bass trap means it traps the bass. Yeah. It reduces the amount oh, of bass. Look at the size so of these speakers. I know. Can you believe that? <laughs> this this guy's son, who at the time was ten years old, is lying down in front of, of of these gigantic speakers, which, by the way, he built himself out of kits. Wow. Those speakers are do-it-yourself kits. They looked like uh, the clipsch horns or the. What do they call them? The sound of the movie theaters. Oh yeah, yeah. Voice of the theater. Voice of the theater speakers. They look big. Yeah, big. They big. are. They're gigantic. Yeah. And they do use horns for the for the tweeters. So they're they've got three horn. three smaller speakers for the mid range and the high end, and then well, two, and those are the front. Yeah. The two giant subwoofers. <laughs> subwoofers. Twenty one inch subwoofers. Yikes. Yeah, those the smaller ones are the front, left, right, and center speakers. Even the surrounds look like pretty hefty speakers. Yeah, nice. yeah, they are nice. And, so, is this uh, better that, than a movie theater? You think? You know, that is a really good question. Um, in general, I would have to say yes. Well, there's Except, no kids in the eighth row no throwing kids. popcorn. Your feet aren't right. sticking to the floor. But yes. as far as reproduction of the film, what does he have for, for a what does he have for a, a projector? Uh, he has an Epson, I believe. It's a relatively affordable projector, an Epson 5050UB, as I recall, which is probably in the $3,000 range. No, well, that's, you know, a, so yeah, that's not, surprisingly affordable, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and that, that's a great projector. Um, I myself would choose a JVC, but that's probably in the five six thousand dollar range. At well, least. One, one of the things that's good about some building this thing is you can have a projector properly positioned in the back so yep. you don't get key stoning you don't have to compensate for that correct you correct. can uh uh dim it i presume this goes completely to black so the projector doesn't have to be as bright so that True. saves you yeah, money that as room, well right? that room is a black hole which and, is exactly what you want it's not a it's not a great distance i would say maybe 30 feet from the from the screen something like oh that. no it's prop more like 20, 15 oh, it's or pretty 20. close. Okay, yeah, so again, you don't 20. you don't need you know a Runco high end <laughs> flamethrower flamethrower because it's a smaller room and it's completely right. black and right. that's great. Right, exactly. Nice. Oh, it's I'm sure it's a beautiful picture, beautiful sound. He's got overhead speakers, so he's got a true Atmos. Well, Scott, I think you need system. to go there and see. I, what do you? You, <laughs> you can't just look at pictures and say how good it is. No, it's true. Uh, I would just have to fly to Louisville, Kentucky in this case. Hey, well worth it. Go in May and you can see the <laughs> Kentucky Derby. So he's yeah, using, it's interesting, for his uh, uh, sources, an mm -hmm. Apple TV and NVIDIA Shield, which is my, one of my favorite Android uh, devices, yep. PlayStation 5, yep. Xbox gamer, Series X. Obviously. Yeah, a lot of gaming. He's even got a home theater PC hooked up to it for gaming. Right. So this but would be a heck no of a... No cable, no satellite. Oh, interesting. None, none of that stuff. He's ah. he's a uh, in the in that sense he's a cord cutter. I don't think he even has a uh, an, an over the air tuner. He's watching everything by streaming. I think all and, of us, because of COVID, uh, have created some sort of nest to watch yep. TV in. Most yep. of us aren't going to take over a garage and build it out. Uh, yeah, can you true. build a pretty good home theater in your living room? You can, sure. He's if, skeptical. <laughs> well, well I guess as good as this, you could. It's not be as good as a as a dedicated. Well, I understand, but not. not everybody. In fact, I would say most not, people don't want to dedicate a do that. whole right. room to sure. it and all so, that. So, yeah. so you can you can do plenty in a living room, um, as long as you follow a few rules. Like you don't want a bright light or a window if you're going to watch during the day directly across from the TV. And I would use a TV in a living room rather than a yeah. projector. You get blackout you need curtains. More light. You know, get some blackout. When we curtains. want to really enjoy TV, we go into our bedroom where we have an OLED setup. Not for right. not 
we actually have a little sitting area so and a nice couch and we can completely darken it and that's a great place to watch the OLED. Right. And we're only about yeah. 5 or 6 feet away so oh, it really for, is a cinema a 50, experience. 50 inch or something. 70 inch. Yeah. So 70, it's a, oh. Yeah. It's like going to the movies and I yeah, make a exactly. hell of a good popcorn so. There you Scott go. Scott Wilkinson Home Theater Geek. <laughs> watch his podcast youtube.com/avsforum. All right, Scotty, I believe right. it's your turn. Aye, right, thank you, Captain. All righty. Let's give you a clock. A clock, thank you very much. Hello, everyone. So nice to see you. I see Mike Mann is in the chat room. Good to see you, Mike. We need to catch up sometime. Um, it has been a while. What are you, what are you, what did you link here? Oh, the Epson. Uh, the 5050 UB 4K Pro. Yep, exactly right. Um, good projector. Really good projector. Uh, yeah, for the money. I have a, actually, <laughs> after I was, after I left AVS Forum, I did go to a Cedia show right after that. And because I was not, you know, on, in the a, a member of AVS Forum, well, I'm a member of AVS Forum because I wasn't an employee. I wasn't a, the editor of AVS Forum. I entered a a drawing for a projector from Epson, and I won. <laughs> so I have this very nice Epson. It's the previous generation, a couple of years ago now, the forty forty fifty, I think forty ten. I can't remember exactly, um, but I haven't had a place to put it. Um, in my new in my new home, which will have a screening room, it won't be perfect. Uh, like Leo said, it's you know it's, most of us can't do what uh, what Steve did there in that home theater of the month. I I wish I could, but uh, I am going to have a screening room that I'm going to paint uh, dark Munsell gray, and I'm going to have uh, Atmos sound in it. I'm probably actually I'm not probably not going to use the projector in that room either. I'm probably going to get a new QD OLED from Sony probably. Uh, that's the one that won the Value Electronics um, TV shootout. And so that's probably what I'm going to end up doing. Um, Web 7350, no, I have not published my review of the new soundbar yet. Sorry about that. It has been taking me a little while, but I will get to it, I promise. Uh... So let's see here. Where am I? Oh, I to see the clock, I need to go to Zoom. There it is. About a minute 30 left. Um, I did not see Top Gun Maverick uh, FOMO. Uh, that's, that's on my list. It, it's not, not high on my list. It's not that big a deal for me. Um, Phoenix Warp 1. So for uh, spousal acceptance factor aside... Is black the best color for the walls of a viewing room, or is it gray? Um, it it doesn't matter that much if it's dark gray or black. Um, black could get a little oppressive, actually. Uh, so my last home theater, I did a Munsell gray with 9% reflectivity, which is very, very dark. Uh, and I'll probably do the same thing in, in this new room. So, <laughs> Chumley, Sony should give me that TV for free. Yeah, well, I don't think so. Hopefully, they'll sell it to me at industry accommodation since I've been a longtime member of the industry. We'll see. Um, Keith, uh, 512, have you got one of the new 42-inch LG Flex TVs for review? No, I don't. I don't know what the 42... I wouldn't normally review a TV as small as 42 inches, uh, but I don't know what it, what that is. Is it actually flexible? Um, Mike Mann, black is too reflective. Well, not if it's matte. Not if it's matte finishes, or maybe I'm wrong on that. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. 8888-ASK-LEO, the phone number. Back to the phones we go, and Barney is on the line from San Pedro, California. Hello, Barney. Hello there. It's, uh, anyway, good to hear you. Uh, I've got, a, I've got a, a, a 
a disturbing kind of a thing come up. I got this alert on my email uh, from Google. And uh, let's see, it, it said, uh, some of your saved passwords were found online. Some of you say uh, your Google account is not affected, but there was, they found a data breach from a site or app you, that I use. And I'm, I'm, I'm wondering how legitimate this whole yeah, thing is. Yeah, it's a good question. So the first thing to do is not to do, <laughs> I guess, is not to click any links in that email. Because, uh, boy, I cannot emphasize enough, and I, and I hear it happen so many times from smart people who are maybe a little too trusting or who have heard, you know, so many scare stories that they're, you know, very nervous and so they get an email that purports to be from their bank, from Google, from Amazon. Maybe they even get a text message. That's the newest attack vector. And it'll have a link in it that says, just to make sure, you know, everything's okay, click this link and check. So in an email, the first thing to do is to look at who the email came from. And if it's not from a legit Google address, forget about it. It's easy to spoof that, though. So it, a really dedicated bad guy might make it look like it came from Google.com so you can, or Google support. But, I, but a lot of times they're just lazy. <laughs> and it'll say, you know, it'll come from a Yahoo account or something like that. So that's check the, who the email came from. If there are no links to click in it, Google may send these things out from time to time. The best way to verify this and and I think it's worth doing it is to go to a website called Have I Been Pwned? That's owned with a P P W N E D. Have I Been Pwned? Dot com. This is a completely safe, reliable site. But you make sure you go to the right one. Have I Been P W N E D? Dot com. Uh, and they N E D P W N like owned but with a P. The hackers the. Uh, Silly boys, they 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 didn't want to say owned, I guess, so they say pwned. Have I been p w n e d dot com, and you can enter in your email and see if that's been seen in a breach. But you, in this case, want to see if your password's been seen in a breach. At the top of the page, there's a link that says passwords. Now, this is why it's really important you go to this site, and not any other site, because you're going to give it your password. Now, in this case of this site, it's safe. They don't actually save the password, and they explain how this works. But what they're going to do is compare this uh, hash of this password with passwords that have been leaked. And this is what Google's saying is it's not just that your email has been leaked or whatever, but we've seen in a breach, we've seen your password. Now, if you enter your password and it's and click the button that says pwned uh, and it says, yeah, we've seen it in this breach, is that cause for concern? It is if you've reused that password. And we say, well, I'm sa I say this all the time, do, do never use a password more than once, never, ever, for this very reason. Because you might use this password on the, you know, a site you don't care about, right? You know, a, a weather weather.com. Who cares if somebody hacks your weather.com account? But what if weather.com, and I'm using this example, they have not been breached, but if they get breached and uh, and that password was used also at your bank.com, that's, that's a problem. So if you've been reusing passwords, this is apps, and this is why Google might well have sent that email out. Uh, th th that's not an unusual thing. You can also go to myaccount.google.com slash notifications and and see if that it you know now you're at a google site because it's google.com in there right not google that, dot yeah, they've shown me that on on here that 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 site you just mentioned okay appears be, uh, be the, careful though because a link in an email can say that and underneath it can be hidden a hacker site that looks just like that so don't click the link in the email never ever do that type it into your browser by hand i know it's a pain yeah. But then look at the notifications, and that'll tell you whether it was a real notification. Sounds like it was. They do send those out. Now you really want to make sure that those are those sites where you use that password, that you change it to a good, unique password. And this is where a password manager becomes pretty much a necessity. These days we have to know so many passwords. You know, when you and I were kids, you knew your home phone number and your locker combination, and that was that. And you could keep them in your head. 
Now we have hundreds of them. So you need a password manager. The way that works, and there are a lot of them, I'll give you some names in a second, but the way that works is it has a vault that you know the one master password to, like your safe combination. You memorize that, and it should be a good, long, strong one. But then it remembers everything else. Furthermore, it will generate a new password every time you need one that is long, strong, and, and unfortunately, a good password is unmemorable. So you can't, you wouldn't want to memorize all these passwords. Let the password manager do it for you. One password's very popular. LastPass is very well known, very popular. I use one that's open source, so it's free, called Bitwarden at bitwarden.com. They're also a sponsor of our shows, so I like to mention them. Uh, but I've used them since before they were a, a sponsor. So those are three good ones. There are many of them. If you're using that, let it generate the passwords. They These programs will also help you fix these ones because uh, you can actually, in, in the case of LastPass and 1Password, say, uh, go through all my passwords, find insecure passwords, ones that have been seen in a breach, etc., and repair them. And it'll one by one take you to those sites, suggest new passwords, you know, the, the password change stuff. And uh, so I think this is... You know, Google does send these out, but so do bad guys. So the, the, the remedy always is to type stuff in by hand. Never click a link. Never click a link in text messages or emails. No matter how urgent they seem, how scary they seem, how real they seem, uh, that's a recipe for disaster. This particular uh, instance here, they're asking me uh, that... They say they want to. They want to want to make sure it's me. So what they're asking for, they want me to uh, put in my my uh, to unlock my phone. That was what. That was. The That's okay. That I, That's, That's probably okay. okay. Um, right. I can I can imagine an attack where they attack a site, <laughs> and the site says, "Okay, now go to your phone and unlock it so that we can approve it." <laughs> And uh, you do that, and you think that you're unlocking one site when, in fact, it's the bad guy unlocking. So I can I can't imagine I can certainly imagine an attack that uses that, but generally that is secure. Again, hand do it by hand is always better than clicking a link in an email. All right. Well, thanks. A lot. I'm glad you I, called. It looks legit, but I just it, I thought it will always look legit because it's very easy to copy that exact format. And send you an email that looks exactly the same, except underlying that link to Google is hackers.ru. Uh, or something, okay. right? You get it? Yeah. You don't see hackers.ru, yeah. you see google.com slash notifications, but th th it is. So that's why it's always risky to click a link. Links can be, an email can be obscured. What happens with text messages is they generally don't send the link out right. They'll they'll use a link shortener. You've probably seen bit.ly. Uh, there's a lot of link shorteners uh, at tinyurl.com, that kind of thing. And so they'll put that link in, and you it won't even be apparent what you're clicking. Very dangerous. Uh, the latest the latest really is attacking uh, via text messages because it's so immediate. You know, a Amazon, a message, it looks like it came from Amazon. We see some unauthorized account on your account, uh, authorized activity on your account. It seems to be from, over. you know, they'll really try to scare you. It seems to be from Russia. We do, sure don't want this to happen. Click this link and log in to verify. You click the link, you log in. It ain't, a, it ain't Amazon. And you've just given the bad guys money. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Okay, back to you, Scotty. Hey, sorry thank about the you. abrupt termination. Oh no, that's quite I, all right. I, I came running in with my coffee, and I had to sit down and talk. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you for thank you for doing this. I appreciate it. Oh sure, no problem at all. So uh, hello everybody. Um, I was just going to answer a question. Uh, James P. I don't know if that's how you would say it. I was looking for a 48 to 50 inch TV and he could go up to a couple of grand for quality. So 
The obvious answer to me is an OLED TV. And as it happens, OLED, I'm going to go look at OLED TVs. Um, and I don't want all these pop-ups. And I'm going to go for... I'm going to go for 55 max. I'm going to go for 48 min. Oh, they won't let me go that narrow it that badly. Anyway, um, I would recommend the uh, C2. You can't go higher than 50 inch. Fortunately, LG makes a 48 inch um C2. I don't see it here. Hang on a second. It's got to be here somewhere. Um, hmm. Well, let me let me look elsewhere because that is the one I'm undoubtedly going to recommend. LG 48C2. Let's see if I can find that. Um, yeah, here it is at Best Buy for 1300 bucks. Uh, discount uh, Bandit and Walmart all are, are around $1,300. Um, so, yeah, that's absolutely what I would recommend. I'm looking at LG now. I'm going to go to the 48-inch Evo OLED TV, $1,300. Um, they don't make a 50. There aren't very many people who make 50-inch TVs. Uh, the the one above 48 is 55, and most of the TVs in the 50 range are, are actually 55. So uh, I would definitely get the um, LG 48. I think Mike Mann has a 48 that he uses in color, in his color work. Um, it's a year or two older. It's not the C2, which is the most recent one, but... Um, Anyway, that's that's an easy that's an easy answer. <laughs> um, the forty eight inch LG C two thirteen hundred bucks. If you say you have a couple grand to go, that saves you seven hundred dollars. You can get a really great sound bar for that. Uh, Mike Mann says he has the CX, okay, or the C ten. They used a <laughs> they used a, a Roman numeral for for that, I guess. Or is that the twenty? I think it is. It's a 2020 model, I think, because uh, now we're up to the 2022 models, and it's called the C2. So there you go. Uh, oh, Swamp Rat says the Sony he bought was a 50-inch. Okay, so some people do make 50-inchers. Um, Web 6797, have I seen any of the new TCL TVs just released? No, I haven't. Uh, I would expect them to be good. I hope they are because I love touting them because they're really good value or they have been up till now. Um, Joey G, are there any wireless headphones that duplicate good surround? Um, headphones, there are a few that do it by themselves, but more to the point uh, is uh, getting a service that will send a surround signal for headphones. Sony does this. They have a system, I forget what it's called now, Real Audio, something like the 3D Real Audio, I forget. Uh, Tidal has some has quite a few titles. <laughs> Tidal, T-I-D-A-L, has quite a few titles, T-I-T-L-E-S, uh, in this format. And you can use it with any pair of headphones. And it simulates surround pretty well. I have reviewed it. You can go to uh, techhive.com and uh, it's, you know, I reviewed it some years ago, so it's in there somewhere. But absolutely, uh, it, it can be done. Now, <laughs> I have seen a couple of headphones that actually have multiple drivers in them that are intended to simulate surround, actually not simulate, it actually is surround. Um, but those are quite expensive. I think they're more aimed at gamers. Um, I don't remember the name of the company that made them. Uh, but it's much easier to find something like, oh, there was one I reviewed recently that was terrible. <laughs> so I don't recommend it. Uh, JVC made a, a system called Exofield. 
and they had a special headphone, special box, processor box, and it, it did not work at all. It was really, really quite bad. So I don't recommend that. Uh, but the Sony Real Audio, I think it's, that's what it's called. Oh, let me let's see if I can look that up. Um, Sony 3D Headphone Audio. Sony 3D Headphone Audio. What is that called? Um, 360 Reality Audio. That's what it's called. <clears throat> um, so it has to be the... the the, the music file has to be encoded in that format. But like I say, um, there are, uh, Tidal has a bunch of titles. Here's something interesting. Amazon has Sony MDR DS6500 digital wireless 3D surround headphones. Um, now that's kind of interesting. MDR D, and it's wireless too. Uh, DS6500 Digital Wireless 3D Surround Headphones. Apple's uh, AirPod Max headphones use Apple's spatial audio, which is Dolby. Oh, Dolby do they? Atmos. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And, uh, right. and they um, are on sale right now because I think Apple might be announcing something new, but they're 100 bucks mm. off, which I, I bought them at 550 I don't think they're worth 550 but maybe at 450 Mm, the problem is it's okay. Bluetooth, and uh, I don't, you know, yeah. you're not going to get good audio quality from you're Bluetooth. You're not going to get good audio quality. You certainly do get the quality. spatial audio. You get the surround. Mm, okay. Format. All right. And they don't These do it with multiple drivers. That's a silly idea. You only it's have two idea. ears. It's coming know, from the same location. It doesn't make any sense. Well, except that the, the, I, I tried these at a show once, and they're huge. They're gigantic. They look like Princess Leia's uh, buns. You know what oh, I mean? That's silly. It's silly. It was I silly. I think the way that... Uh, Spatial works is basically like binaural used to work, right? Yeah. You got yeah. two ears. They're going to yep. use a synthesized soundstage to make you feel like you're getting right, surrounded. Right, right. They're, 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 they're using phase cues and delay cues to trick your ears into thinking that a sound is coming from right. one direction or another. There have been lots These, of them. Um, there was, a for a while, a Dolby Surround uh, headphone standard. Correct. Dolby Dolby Headphone was what yeah. it was called. And I had some. And that they were great. great. Yeah, they were great. Oh, yeah. worked great. I don't think it's in very many products. No, they went out. They AV killed receivers. it. Yeah, they killed it. Yeah, it's it came from annoying. Lake Audio in Australia. Yeah, these Dolby MDRs, was pushing it, but they were, they were, but then it didn't go anywhere, so they killed it. Right. These Sony headphones on Amazon say currently unavailable. So yeah, that maybe it's like three D video. <laughs> <laughs> like three D video, yeah. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Um, uh, FOMO, what's the second best TV technology out there? Um, well, I think uh, I think mini LED uh, LCD is probably the second best technology out there. I'd, well, the best LCD, is OLED, and then there's OLED. Q, Q OLED, QD OLED. Oh, QD OLED is the best. Absolutely. That's the best. So then OLED there's is OLED. now the second best. Right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> now we're glad we cleared that up. Thank you, Scott. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have okay, a great, you have bet. A great See week. you next week. All right, take care. Yeah, you Stay too. cool. Bye. Well, hey, 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 how are you today, Leo Laporte, the tech guy? Time to talk computers, the internet, home theater, digital photography, smartphones, smart watches, all that jazz. 8888-ASK-LEO. If it's got a chip in it, we'll talk about it. 888-827-5536. Toll free from anywhere in the U.S. or Canada. Outside uh, that area. You can still call, but you'll have to use Skype out or something like that. 8888-ASK-LEO. Website techguylabs.com has links to all the things we talk about, so you don't have to write them down. It'll also have audio and video from the show and a transcript as well. It takes a couple of days. Once that's all up there, uh, it's kind of your ultimate resource for things you heard on the show. Episode 1923, we've entered the jazz age. FTC has announced it's reviewing Amazon's iRobot takeover. We talked about this a few weeks ago when Amazon announced they wanted to buy the robotic vacuum cleaner company. They make the Roomba. A lot of people concerned uh, that Amazon is just getting more and more information about your house, including now with the Roomba, a map of your house. Uh, I don't know, you know, traditional antitrust isn't going to work here, I think, because there's it's a competitive market. Roomba is not 
the only robotic vacuum cleaner out there. Everybody and their brother makes one, including Amazon. So I'm not sure they're going to succeed in that. They're also investigating. <laughs> Amazon really, really got a, got a couple of shots across the bow this week. They're also investigating Amazon's one medical acquisition. They spent a lot more than that, than the $1.7 billion they spent on uh, iRobot. It's $3.9 billion. Uh, the problem, of course, for Amazon is antitrust probes take a long time, like a year or two. So it slows down, you know. But I guess, you know, if you're a big company like Amazon, you know that. You, you've got lawyers, a stadium full of highly paid lawyers who can help you uh, understand <laughs> what's going to happen. Uh, I don't usually do breaches, but uh, la our last caller said you got an email from Google saying your password's been seen in a breach. So I don't usually talk about breaches, but there's, you know, every week there's a dozen or more break-ins. Samsung announced that uh, late July 2022, somebody got into the U.S. Samsung accounts. Many of us, I got an email, got emails from Samsung saying, hey, you might want to change your passwords they didn't get, we don't think they got passwords, but they did get names, contact information, and product registration information. You might want to change your passwords. Yeah, always a good idea. So that might be actually the breach notification that uh, our last caller got. 8888 Ask Leo Marks on the line from Grand Rapids, Michigan. Hello, Mark. Hi, Leo. How are you today? I am great. How are you? Very well. Thank you, sir. Hey, I have a, a another. Um, Tale of Woe with a cell phone, but just a quick question on those breaches. This is the Tale of Woe show, so you came to the right place. <laughs> yeah. I know. <laughs> sure. What about those breaches? Aren't those passwords encrypted where they're stored? Yeah. So nowadays, uh, most breaches do not include things like passwords. Uh, in this case, maybe birthdays. Uh, but what you really want to keep secret is social security number passwords, and then if they get your social things like birth dates and addresses, because those can be used for identity theft, passwords, of course, can be used to hack. You're right. A good company will encrypt the passwords and salt them. That's what you're looking for, encrypted and salted. Uh, and the, you know, the reason is if even if you get a bunch of encrypted passwords, if you were able to decrypt that, maybe, you know, and you can use brute force on something that you've downloaded, maybe you could break into it. But if it's salted, there's no, it can't be reversed. The ideal system, and most good companies do this, they don't have your password. When you set up a password, they process it by hashing it. And the hash gives them a number that's not the password, but when you then go back to the site and enter the password, it's hashed again. And if the hashes match, then it's a match. So that way they don't even have your password, which is what you prefer. And well-run, well-secured companies, absolutely. Salted and hashed, you're safe. And it's easy to remember because it's a good breakfast, a little, little hash with some salt. But many companies, at least until recently, have had poor security practices. And there have been many breaches in years gone by where the passwords were not salted and hashed. And if that's the case, there is a risk. In this case, Samsung says that you they didn't even get passwords. So this is why I don't report on these anymore. There was a Twitter breach recently. There's, I mean, there were a lot of these breaches. But any company that's got decent security is not going to have a password vault that has your password in plain text. That's just a big That makes note. sense. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, now to my tale of will. Mm-hmm. We have a cell phone in our house, <clears throat> one of them, and uh, on this cell phone, a link and a comment on a Facebook post was clicked, and now there's lots of uh, virus notifications coming up with click here to clean, that kind of stuff. So what I normally do in these situations is, is I just factory reset the phone just to make sure it's completely clean. Okay, that would work. And then my own question is, can I save the text messages from being deleted? Yeah, sure you can. Uh, Android or iOS? You said Android, right? Yes. Android. Yeah. Yep. It's actually pretty easy with Android because uh, you can connect it up to a computer and uh, you should be able to see it as a hard drive. The phone itself will pop up a message saying, do you want me to be a phone 
or do you want me to be a hard drive? Uh, sometimes they'll say MTP, which is the phone, uh, pick not phone, uh, camera, sorry. Do you want me to be a camera or a hard drive? If it says MTP, uh, that's camera. Don't say that. It usually say USB or USB mass storage or something like that. Click that. Yeah. And then it'll show up as a drive on your on your desktop in Windows. And you can just yeah. copy them over. There are also uh, many, many programs in the Play Store that will let you back up uh, text messages. So that's easy to do. Um, okay. You probably can get rid of this without doing a complete reset. But it, it's... Maybe it's easier just to do a reset. It's certainly more prudent. Um, yeah, I agree with that one hundred percent. Yeah, Google says they will back up your text messages if you're using Android messages. I presume you are. Which message? Uh, this is the part of the problem with Android is <laughs> you can. There's a whole lot of message programs you could use. You can use WhatsApp if you have a Samsung. You could be using Samsung messages if you Google. It could be Google messages. Whose messages are a program are you using? Do you know? Nobody knows, oh, by I'm the way. At, You're oh, not alone. Nobody yeah. knows. <laughs> <laughs> it's, yeah, it just popped up on the phone. Exactly. Right? You just use whatever. What kind of phone? Is it a Samsung? Yeah, a Galaxy A42. So probably using Samsung messages. So Samsung will back them up in the Samsung app. Uh, Samsung further muddied the waters because in the most recent Samsung phones use Google's and Android messages instead of Samsung's by default. But that old a, older A40 a, a phone will a series phone will probably use uh, Samsung messages. So you can I think Samsung with their backup will back up the messages. Uh, certainly Google will with the Google messaging app. Let me just check. Okay. Backing up Samsung. Yeah, I think it's in the Samsung cloud. Yeah, messages will go up to the Samsung cloud. What's nice is when you do, if you have that, when you do a full reset, it should restore from that cloud. So make sure in the backup in settings, you're, you've turned on your Samsung account and you're backing up. By the way, Samsung just got a breach, so change, <laughs> change your password. <laughs> uh, oh, boy. <laughs> Uh, yeah. there, there are, if you even just Google, as I just did, backup Samsung messages, you'll see lots of ways uh, to do that. The Galaxy phones, the A phones all support uh, backup through Samsung's own cloud, just okay. as the Google phones do that. But you have to know what messaging program you're using, and no one knows. It's not even obvious because Samsung calls theirs messages, as does Google. Yeah. <laughs> so it's almost impossible to tell. Yeah, uh, I just will fit the phone and uh, fits. You can't tell. You can't tell. You can, you know what? You can tell the color of the icon, but I, for the life of me, I, I have a Samsung and a Google phone here. I could probably look, but it's, you know, you'll figure it out. <laughs> yeah, I, Mark, I think we can get that. Done. You can figure it out. Hey, Mark, a pleasure. Thank you for calling. I appreciate it. Eighty-eight, eighty-eight. Ask Leo, Leo Laporte, the tech guy. <laughs> Somebody said if it's a day with a Y in it, someone got hacked. Yeah, there's been a every day. There's a breach. Every day. That's why you need a password manager, right? Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Ah. All right, let me go turn that thing on. Where's the on off button? Is that it? Is that it? On. Yes, it is. It's the on off button. The on off button. The on off button. Ugh. Panty Plasma's Graveyard Tuba. I don't even know what you're talking about. Roboform. Yeah, I remember them. Yeah, kind of a little uh, old school, huh? Better than nothing. was probably the first password manager I used was Roboform AI.
I'd like, uh, I'm looking through RoboForms website for more information about how they do it. Good. They use PBKDF2, which is hashed with a salt. If you're using RoboForm, make sure that they're doing many, many iterations of PBKDF2, like thousands. Yeah, this looks like it's uh, comparable to everybody else. AES-256, um, they don't store the master password. They have 2FA. They use PBKDF2, which is really important. That's that salting and hashing we were talking about. Um, yeah, it looks very modern. So absolutely, go with RoboForm if you want. See if they've got any breaches. It's very cheap, which is nice. And they have a free tier. No, I haven't watched it yet, MT Pockets. I, I got your recommendation. I saw it the other night. We're in the middle of a bunch of stuff, including The Lord of the Rings and The House of the Dragon. Leo Laporte, the head-banging tech guy. 8888, <laughs> ask Leo. Ned on the line from Los Angeles. Hello, Ned. Hi, how are you doing, Leo? I'm great. How are you, sir? Question. Yes. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I'll find out after you tell me what to do. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, my work computer uh, is being updated. So they said if you want it, you could take it. Oh, nice. So great. Nice. Yeah, which is really nice of them. Yeah. Trouble is, I don't remember the password that I put in it. <laughs> so. Well, how are you using it? I was using it, but I had to change my password because we have to change it. Oh, they're saying if you want to take it home, you need Correct. to, you know, honestly, if you want to take it home, the best thing to do is wipe it out anyway and start fresh. Uh -huh. That that is what I thought about. That's yeah, and I'll tell to... you why. Even if you didn't forget your password, you want to do this because the work probably has put a variety of tools on there to make it easier for IT to manage it. Perhaps they have tools on it that spy on you. Uh, you know, that's not at all unusual uh, for employ, employ, employment, uh, you know, works, works, places of work, places of employ, your boss to put stuff on there to make sure you're working. Things like that. You just don't want that on there. And the good news is, is it uh, what version of Windows does that computer use? OK, um, it started with Windows 10. Good. And they said, OK, no problem. Type it in. We'll clear it out. I said, fine. I couldn't remember the past. You don't need to. You so, can just start over. Wipe it off. So what they said was, okay, no problem. We'll do a factory reset. Yeah. Which they did. Good. And it brought it to Windows <laughs> 7. That's how old it is. But good news, Microsoft remembers that you had Windows 10 on it. So exactly. You can go I'm download... There is a tool Microsoft offers called the Media Creation Tool. Make sure you get it from Microsoft.com, not anywhere else. Not anywhere else. Yep, you did. You download it, you put it on a USB key, you boot to it, you install Windows, and you can install 10 or 11. It doesn't matter. Because you have a license for 10, just by virtue of it being installed on there and authorized, you can continue to use 10 or 11. I tried doing that, but I got an error message. Oh, what does it say? Zero X eight zero zero seven two F eight F dash. I'm gonna stop you. I, I, those numbers are not worth anything for anybody. You know, <laughs> does it? Is, <laughs> that's what. What happened? When? At one point, did you get that error? Um, the minute I hit the video creation tool. Oh, okay. So it's just creation. it just didn't get created properly, or it's a bad download, uh, or something went wrong. So try again. Okay. That's all. All right. Get a, get a new copy. It. Get a new copy of it. 
Um, oh, look. Was it? Oh, oh, look, Scooter X, you're so good. Was it error code 0x80072F8F-0x20004FB? Anyway, I can go on and on and on. I think it was that one. Let's see what let's see what Scooter X must have Googled it as you were saying it. <laughs> uh, three different same some servers no longer oh it's the old TLS 1.0 but Windows still so first run the easy fix okay we're gonna this is crazy this is a very weird thing but we but but believe it or not there is a solution to this okay um which is which is interesting. So for some reason, your computer is trying to use an old security protocol to talk to the server. Right. And that's that error message. I tried um, doing the reg edit where you take the zero and make it into a one. And then you'll restart. And it's the same error message. I think what you need to do... And I guess you haven't done this. You're still booting from the hard drive. You need to boot okay. up to that USB key that you created. Okay. So when you boot from the hard drive, you're booting that old Windows 7, which does have an effect by default uses an outdated security pro protocol, TLS 1. So, right. so don't boot from the hard drive. The USB key has a modern operating system on it that will, have, will support TLS 1.2. Uh, and so it should work just fine if you do it booting from the USB key. All right, so try it really from there. Yeah, do you know how to boot uh, to USB on your machine? Uh, no, I've never tried it. It depends on who made the machine, but it it's very, you know, you've done this before, similar to going into the system settings. When you turn the machine all the way off and then you turn it on, you're going to tap a key. Now, the problem is it could be escape, it could be delete. Very commonly, it's F12. That's the first one I'd try, function key 12 or function key 11. Sometimes it's F7, sometimes it's F2. But there is there are two menus you can go to by doing this. One is the system settings, what we used to call the BIOS settings. But what there's another one that says boot order that will tell it to boot to the... And then you can see the USB key and you say, yeah, boot to that, not to the hard drive. And then it'll start up the Windows installer. That's what's on that USB key. And then from then on, no more problems. All right. I will try it. Who makes the machine? Just so I uh, maybe I can get you the answer. Uh, HP. HP. Try escape. Okay. Escape. So you, you shut the machine down. And then you start it up and you tap that escape key <laughs> until it goes into the boot menu. Now, if it won't see the USB key, you will then have to go into the HP's settings and turn on boot from USB. Sometimes that's turned off. All right. So that's, this is the trick. And that's why most people will just boot from the hard drive because you know that's going to boot. But the best way to install Windows, a fresh version of Windows, is to boot to that w USB drive that the media creation tool made. That'll boot up the installer fresh. Everything will work just fine. Okay, I will try that. All right. There you go. Another, another satisfied customer. Yes, it is. A long-time listener. Hey, bless you, Ned. Have fun. Bye-bye. That's nice of them to give you the old computer. And they did, you know, they did exactly the right thing, which is they wiped it and installed, you know, they went back to factory default. Then it's on you. Now it's a Windows 7 machine, which you don't want to use because that's insecure. That, that means it was a pretty old machine. That's why they're giving it to you. But the good news is since they had already upgraded to Windows 10, Microsoft keeps track of machines that have been upgraded to Windows 10. They call it an entitlement. There's no, no serial number anymore. They just say, oh, I know this machine. We've got a database, I guess, of a billion and a half machines that have been upgraded to Windows 10. <laughs> wow. And uh, in that database, they go, oh, yeah, it's Ned's machine. Yeah, it was using it, was, it was at work. And they, the way they do that is they, uh, they make, um, you know, a database of the serial numbers for the hardware and the NIC and all that stuff. They keep track of all that. They say, yeah, it's Ned's machine. He's had Windows 10. He's okay. He's good. Good to go. Is that not the case for Windows 10 Pro?
Or do, that, does it mean he has to upgrade to Windows 10 Pro? So some, yeah, you know, that's a good point. He may have an enterprise installed 10. I didn't even think of that. Yeah, that's a good point, Chumley. Well, uh, I'm glad we didn't uh, <laughs> didn't go too deep down that rabbit hole. Johnny Jet. Hey, Leo, how are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. I dodged a bullet. I was exposed on Sunday. Oh. Hanging out with a guy, had COVID, uh, drove to the restaurant, had dinner, drove back. He texted me the next day, I'm sick. <sighs> so I've been uh, I've been uh, quarantining and, ta and and testing every day, and I never got it. And I think it's because I got it a month ago, and it's uh, I still have some good antibodies, I guess. And this is a time for you to be traveling. Yeah. Well, this is the time for me to wear my ma my, <laughs> my my real my Bane mask, which I have been doing. And I, you know what happened? I got loose. I got relaxed. And so I'm not gonna. I'm gonna. You know, I'm gonna pretend it's 19. 99, no, 20. I told you, man, we've been so careful. And then yeah. we sent Jack to, to nurse, uh, not nursery school, preschool, sorry, kindergarten. Yeah, the kids are going to school now. That's, you're out of luck. Not one kid's wearing a mask, not one no. teacher. No, you're going to get it. And I'm like, man, man, I'm oh man. For this new, uh, yeah. this new vaccine. Yeah. Um, you said that one airline refused entry to a guy wearing a hard mask like that. Yes, I can't remember which one, but I think it must I, I think it might have been. I think it was American. They probably learned by now, though, right? This it is wasn't a, that long ago. This is a superior mask to uh, to this an was N95. only a few months ago. This is that N99.7. Listen, it, it all depends on the agents, the flight attendants. It all depends I've on. I've never the route. seen anything like that before. That can't I, be I illegal. ask my friends. I have friends who are like there's just like two people wearing a mask on the plane. I have others depending on where they're going. They, they say fifty percent. Yeah. So. Well, I'll I'll bring a paper mask. If I mean we're not going anywhere till April now, but uh, who knows what April will bring? Let's hope this mess will be over. <laughs> no, I've been saying that for two and a half years. Yeah, but it. I, I mean, can't go on forever. Is that what you're thinking? Yeah. And you're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I, and I absolutely. Hey, well, can since go I got this here and we're not on the air, you got to try this sometime. What I found it at a, um, at the, I think it was a, the Carlsbad Farmer's Market. Don't and I pay that. for it. They don't give me a deal or anything like that. Green, it's green. You know, this is green juice fed. So we have a new, uh, I think they're going to be a sponsor. I don't know, but we have a, Lisa brought home some green juice I've been drinking. It's good. It's a you know, powder one, that you add to your ex other drinks. Well, they only ship to within California. Oh. Well, that's because. And if you do fresh. over ninety dollars, it's free shipping. So I, I book like I get uh, nine bottles. What's it called? So Hundred green drink. It's called the Morning Star Ranch. Oh. And they have either grapefruit, orange. Have you visited or the lemon. ranch, or is it just? No, but I've met them at the farmers it's a, market. It's a it's a big industrial building in Reseda. Morning Star Ranch. <laughs> no, green I don't think so. Drink. But I'm not sure if I'm gaining weight from this because. Yeah. All of a sudden, I started being in weight. I was like, well, it's what? A if it's got fruit juice in it, it's got calories. Yeah. This might be a problem, but Our it tastes oh, so look. good. It is a real organic farm nestled in the hills of Valley Center, California. It's really good. The morning Especially star the I love the lemon one. It's got grapefruit, organic blue agave nectar. That's sugar. For those who don't know, that yeah. would be actually it's high fruct. It's fructose. Um, that will make you fat. That's what uh, that was. Must is it, be is it pretty sweet? Oh yeah, but it's so yeah. good. Yeah, you're drink. It's a soda pop. Damn. <laughs> All right, here we go. What'd you say, John? You said listen. You said you don't want me singing. <laughs> He's been everywhere. Our traveling guru lets us travel better with high tech. Mr. Johnny Jet, his website, johnnyjet.com. He's got great newsletters there. You can search for travel fairs there. It's all free. He's also on Instagram and Twitter at Johnny Jet. Well worth following on Twitter. Check his lists because he has a lot of uh, lists on Twitter. Hey, I'm now on MSN just this week. 
MSN, the Microsoft News Service? Yep, so they're now taking my articles. So when I click in the lower right of my Windows 11 and I get those MSN news feeds, I'm going to get a yeah, travel feed? You nice. might, so fo please follow me there. So, I will. I will. Yeah. Congratulations. So that's great. So far, that's great. Yeah, it's driving traffic. It's uh, yeah. real nice. Yeah. I'm happy. I bet it's about driving that. traffic. Yeah, you can't get away from it on uh, Windows 11. It's like... Well, when I turn on my computer, I've, I've had MSN as my homepage for a while. Oh, And nice. so finally got a, nice. a deal with them. So it's good news. So, my friend. Also good news, by the way, the yes. DOT, as promised, they rolled out their dashboard this week. DOT on Thursday. dashboard. What is that when it's at home? You know, I just wrote a post. That's why I was a little bit late logging on here. And it's not published yet, but... Um, so they, in like layman's terms, they're showing the consumers what they're owed if there's a controllable, uh, problem or there's not, if there's weather and, uh, there's a graph. Let me see if I can, I just, I just uploaded it all. And I, I, just I just Googled it and found it. it. It's pretty quick. So it's real basic. Yeah. But it's good to have cause it's your legal rights, right? Yeah. Well, first of all, your legal right is if, a, if an airline cancels or delays your flight significantly, they owe you a full refund in cash, no questions asked, even if it's bad weather. But They'll this, try and, they might try and give you a voucher. This uh, tells you what airlines are going above and beyond in doing, right? Beyond Correct. what they're legally required to. Well, that's nice. Cor Correct. So go, go on the uh, airline with all the green checks is the rule. Yeah, the ones with the, the the one the three with the worst. Well, Legion's number one, which is not surprising. Also, Spirit and Frontier. Frontier's not but, so hot either. <laughs> no, but so JetBlue is good. Green all the way. American green all yep. the way. Delta green all the way. And United green all the all the way. You These still are, got you still have to fight them and get it out of them. But they're not going <laughs> to they're not going to tell you this. So, but is Labor Day weekend a big? I mean, this is Labor Day weekend. Is it a big travel weekend? Big big time because people get. A day off. Not as not as busy as Fourth of July, but it's close. So it's going to start slowing down. I'm looking at the numbers right now. So yesterday, 2.1 million people went through. A, three years ago, same thing, 2.1. And it, but on Thursday, it was 2.3 million people went through, and in 2019, it was 2.1. So so we're actually ahead of it. We're ahead of pre-COVID. And just imagine if the airlines didn't cut their service. I mean, so many of them had to cut about 15% of their flights because they don't have the staff. Yeah, that's, that's so weird. It would be even higher. Yeah. The good news is, uh, at least in uh, Los Angeles, in your area, uh, it, it looks like COVID uh, is way down. So maybe it's, maybe it's safe. Knock on wood. Maybe Since not. I, yeah, don't say it out loud. in kindergarten. So, oh, yeah. yeah, the school school season, the fall. We call it the fall COVID season. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the, also the good news is the fares are dropping. So, you know, start pricing out flights for a week or two from now, and you can find a really good deal. Uh, you could fly to Maui actually this weekend for, I think it was $300 round trip, $350 round trip. You know, I it's just funny, Lisa, ticket. Lisa and I really want to go to Hawaii, but, but well, she's a little nervous about getting on a plane because that seems to be a... I know you say no, but I keep hearing people getting sick uh, because of it uh, right after hey, air travel. I'm not, I'm not saying no. If the person sitting next to you has COVID, you're going to get it, yeah. most likely. And no one knows anymore because nobody cares anymore because you know, we're done. Right. It's cooked. I, I just try and book the bulkhead or I try and use my miles to get upgraded and have less people around me. But, um, you know, I've talked about fair alerts last week. I had a flight on hold from Maui to L.A. It was... I think it was $125 each. It just dropped. And I just, I booked it last night. So always set a fare alert and also set the fare alert for after you book to see if that price goes down because then you can get a refund or at least a, a credit. So are the uh, problems that airlines have been having with rescheduling or canceling flights uh, over or, uh, is, or is that still a problem? No, it's still a problem, but it's going to be a lot less chaotic okay. since there's not so many people traveling. It but, was pretty bad for a while. Well, it was, this has definitely been the worst summer ever. Yeah. And they're talking that it could be the same for Thanksgiving and Christmas. If there's bad weather, it's definitely going to, going to be, but if there's not, I think we'll be okay. But you know, when you're away on vacation, I mentioned a really cool app and I never told you about it. Well, tell me about so, it. Don't yeah, keep flighty. it a secret. Flighty. So the website's flightyapp.com. Yeah. So they give you the first, your first flight for free. And then it's $5.99 per month or $50 a year. Oh, boy, it better be good. That's a lot of money. 
It is. So if you're, if you're not a freaking tra- traveler, you don't want it. But if you are, you definitely want it because it will tell you everything in advance. They tell you when the flight, the path, when the flight um, path is loaded, if the tail number changed, if your aircraft changed, let's say it went from an A321 to an A319, then you know that, you know, they call it there's going to be less planes, pilot less seats on the plane. grade flight tracking, like travel like a pro. You get the weather, yeah. you get everything. I like this. The, is what the pi- like pilots the, and flight attendants are using this. Oh, really? Okay. Definitely. Actually, they were in beta with them. So, uh, but I really like it. And uh, they give just, just give you everything. They tell you when the gate is assigned, they tell you when the pushback is. And uh, so it's great for tracking your friends' flights, too, if you're picking people up often. So you get you can get it for free for a one limited time. time. I think it's just one, one flight. flight. Okay. So maybe save it for that that special flight. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> okay. All right. I'm willing to try. So just I, I know it. you're into all these little apps and this I app. Like I, to, I think I, like I think know. I think you'll really like it. So is there a so free it I know it's not gonna be as good as this, but is there a free flight tracker? I mean, all the airlines offer it. Yeah. So always sign up for their alerts. I I do pay for TripIt, and TripIt gives me alerts. Me too. TripIt does a good job too. They just don't give you as much information. Yeah. And I don't know if you need all this information unless you're flying a lot. Right. Right. So it's, it's, but I do, I like to know when my flight is changed. I also look, let's, let's say I'm flying American Airlines in their app. They'll tell you where your plane's coming from. I like to know that. That also helps with these cancellations as well, with weathers. So um, they're talking about how, let's say you're flying LA to JFK, but the weather is perfect in both places. But if your plane's coming from San Francisco and there's fog there and they're delayed, that's actually considered a weather delay. Ah. Even though you're not flying between San Francisco and LA, you're going LA to New York. Uh Yeah. So it's a little gray area. This This is really cool. It has the equipment, the tail number. How old the plane is? <laughs> wow. Definitely. And, and these times you think are more accurate. Well, I can tell you they're more accurate than the times they tell you at the airport. Oh, we're having a little trouble here uh, just uh, getting that uh, the door unstuck. So uh, give us an extra 15 minutes to board. And three hours later, yeah, well, we, uh, we, we, our flight crew is arriving from Dallas in another hour. And, yeah, it's just like they drive you crazy. Well, the passengers usually know more than the gate agents in terms of this because they don't, oh. you know, they don't subscribe to these things. Yeah, so, so they're just getting the information yeah, from that's the. That's good. Uh, Say, anybody have flighty? Anybody? I mean, anybody it's know not what's just flighty, trip it or anything, even their own. I mean, you know how many times I've told the gate agents, hey, our flight is delayed. And they're like, no, it's not. No. I'm like, look. And then they type a few things. Like, oh, my God, Ooh. you're right. Maybe they should give every gate agent a flighty. And then. Well, they should they should give every gate agent another agent to help them because they're overworked. <laughs> that's right. They're busy trying to get you to check your bag and things like that. They got yeah. stuff to do. Get toddlers on and things like that. Mr. Jet, where are you going next? I'm going to uh, take my kid to school. <laughs> wear a mask. Yeah. Uh, in fact, I have a whole body suit you can wear. You might, you might not want that. Uh, or actually, better yet, put the kid in the suit. You know, just make sure you keep the oxygen flowing. And, uh, and then uh, come uh, August... Next year, you could take him out of it. Yeah. Well, we are traveling. I'm just staying away from the planes right now, at least for this smart week. man. Yeah, I think I'm going to do uh, road trips. I think that's not so bad. Johnny Jet, johnnyjet.com. Get his newsletters. Follow him on Twitter and Instagram. Join him every week right here. Safe travels, John. Thank you. Good job. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, I like flighty. I, I like tech, this. You know, if I play Wordle, I don't. Wordle. Oh, the world. The Wordle. Wordle. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I have not played that in a while. You know what I play is Quartle. You ever play Quartle? No, what's Quartle? So it's like wor- Wordle, but it's four puzzles at once. <laughs> but you have nine tries and you got to get all four. And it's, I think it's a much better game than Wordle. Just right. wait for New York Times to buy it. So check out Quartle. Quartle. And well, you know, everybody's thinking, oh, if I come up with the next great word game. The New York Times will buy me. Oh, and they, the New York Times got a deal on Wordle. Do you know? It was like they said it was in they, the six they, figures. They said it was right? either a one or two or three million, but their numbers have gone oh, up. Oh, yeah. It's been very big valuable. time. Yeah. Damn. Washington Post is kicking themselves. Q U A R D L E. Q U O R D L E. 
portal. portal. Put so your skills four, four words, at, words once. at once. But you put you put the same word in. So let's say you were, you the word do the word plays P L A Y S. Oh my god! It's going to show looks, up on all four puzzles. This looks complicated. It is at first, but once you get it, it's easy. It's like snowboarding. <laughs> I mean, the first day is rough. So I'm going to use the same easier. word to start all four. Okay. And then the same thing. It's oh, look at this. For all four. Oh, my golly. And But what? So, okay. So I'm getting more clues, but there's more words to solve. And all four words are different. Right? Yeah, they're all different. Oh, that they're all different. stinks. Then you, how are you I'm, supposed honestly, to win if you have to enter the same word in all of them? You got it's a strategy. I think it's why they give you two or three more tries in uh, Wordle. Three more tries. <laughs> you're you're going to love it. Trust me. Just give it two days. The first day I was like, what? My wife turned me on to it. All right. I'm doing, and, another, um, I'm doing another one. All right. Let's see what I got. Oh, I got. Oh, this is tough. This is really tough. So I know it is. O's there. But I don't understand how you're going to get the last word is going to be different. I'll send you one of my How do you get the last it. word? Because how do you enter a different word in all four of them? Just keep, I use, try and use as many letters as you can. Yeah, no, I understand that. Vowels. But how do you, when, okay, say, so it's a four different words, right? Yes, four different words. So how do you but enter you the tries. winning word? No, but when do you enter the, every word I enter is the same. So how do you enter different winning words? Well, because when, let's, let's say that bottom, the fourth one over there, I don't, let's see what that is. I can't figure it out yet. Let's say you know what it is. You just type in, let's say it's donut. It's not, but let's okay. say it's donut. Okay. So you, you would type in donut and then that puzzle is going to be X'd out. And so then you work on the other three. Oh. Oh, that's Th ridiculous. Does that make sense? Yes. So you have to get at least one and six. And then I mean, look at the five. keyboard. The keyboard shows no, you which, which puzzles have which words or letters. This is terrible. This is awful. It, no, you're, this is you. You're going to love it. <laughs> All right, John. If you like Wordle, you're going to love Quartle. I'm going to make Lisa solve it. <laughs> Let me know how it goes. All right, thank you. Have a good one. Have a good one. Take care. See ya. Are you playing music that I'm going to be hearing Wednesday? Is that what you're doing? <laughs> Leo Laporte, the tech guy. <laughs> Uh, 8888 ask Leo. See, I don't, so Joan Jett, I kind of know. Poison, no idea. Motley Crue, I know one song. Def Leppard, I know one song. This is going to be, so keep, I have to do an education, Lady uh, Laura, our, our musical director. She's teaching me the music I will be hearing on Wednesday. <laughs> you know, I, I don't know if you've ever noticed this, but uh, in, um, Shops for ladies' clothing. Uh, where When the women are shopping, the husbands come along, of course. Somebody's got to hold your purse while you're trying clothes on. Uh, those shops tend to have a chair. A chair for the miserable man. The guy who has been dragged along on this shopping excursion and uh, has, to, uh, <laughs> has to sit there. There's a wonderful Instagram uh, account called Miserable Men that features uh, pictures of uh, guys who are along for the ride um, <laughs> during shopping shopping expeditions. They're sitting in the chair, the man's chair, the husband bench, <laughs> and just not just not happy about it. Just not not enjoying it. <laughs> One cotton picking bit. Uh, the only reason I mention this is because I've been spending some time in this chair uh, because we have to pick out outfits for <laughs> for the concert on Wednesday. <laughs> if you're if you have not followed on Instagram, miserable underscore men, <laughs> you're miss you're missing out. Long. Suffering shopping spouses. 8888 Ask Leo. Michael is on the line from Long Beach, California. Hi, Michael. Hello, Michael. Oh, I got to push this button. Hey, so go so ahead. You're on now. Thank you. Girls, girls, girls. Girls, girls, girls. He's singing. Get used to it. Yeah, get used to it. Apparently, uh, we are sitting close enough that we are in range of Tommy Lee's camera. 
I'm not, I'm, hopefully you'll be able to pick up Mick Mars if he falls off the stage. He's been <laughs> dying for about 30 years. Oh, Lord. Thank God he's still alive. Oh, so. I got, you know, it's it's amazing these guys are still around. Oh, especially Mick Mars. They kept saying, oh, Mick Mars is not well. He got this chronic condition, apparently. But they prop him up, so bring wrong, him out. I guess, yeah. Well, I'm I'm looking forward to it. Uh, it'll be it's always interesting to go see these these concerts. What can I do for you, Michael? Yeah, so I've got a quick uh, recommend a quick uh, recommendation on something that Dickie D did. Okay. First of all, I wanted to say, you know, it's very interesting. Ever since you you I think you went on your Alaska cruise and Micah filled in for a couple weeks. Right. Ever since then, man, you like I grew up in uh, the '80s in Chicago. And I don't know if you remember Larry Lujak. Oh, yeah. His sidekick, little snot-nosed Tommy. I, I don't remember Tommy, but I Larry Lujak is a legendary Chicago DJ. You bet. Oh, yeah. He had little Tommy, who was, not to diminish Micah by any means, but like just, hey, they would do animal stories. And you know, <laughs> apparently a koala peed on the former vice president, Jimmy Carter. <laughs> oh, is he going to be all right? It's that kind of like just Oh, Lord. But, but the back and forth has been so good. I feel like he's been energized. Oh, oh, with me and Micah, yes. Well, you know, it takes oh, yeah, a yeah, while yeah. for that kind of um, uh, relationship to, to to mature. And the more I, time I spend with him, Micah, we've always we've always enjoyed each other. And he's a lot younger than I am. And I thought it'd be nice yeah. to have a younger voice on the show. But I think he uh, it's matured quite a bit. And uh, I mean, you guys were going through like a sound, like looking for like morning sound sound, sound effect. Time. Yeah. <laughs> All we need now is a female newscaster. Maybe Kim can do that. And then, and then we'll have the morning. We'll have the morning zoo yeah. tech show. I will bring you your news. Okay, good. The, the PCH is uh, blocked up as usual. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm out here on the uh, Pacific Coast Highway, and uh, nothing's moving, uh, Uncle Lair. The great DJs of the world. I, I, they, they. The, the, I think. I wonder if those days are gone. The morning show guys who really owned. The yeah. market. I guess Bill Handel still owns Los Angeles. That's yeah. absolutely true. I grew up on like Steve Dahl and Gary. Steve Dahl, also Chicago, legendary. Sh and Steve's still around. Uh, he's still doing shows. So. He's got a podcast network. Yeah. Yes. He, he, he was an early guy. He was, it's a subscription based. Podcast. That's the smart thing to do if you're uh, if you're in radio and <laughs> start a podcast network. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> so anyway, so uh, last week, uh, Dick D. Bartolo. Yes, As Mattis Ryder had recommended some uh, earbuds. Yes, Soundcore A40s from Anchor. Yes, those are those yeah. are supposed to be very good. Yeah, yeah, they're hundred bucks, and you know I've always I've had like several pairs that fit around like forty to fifty bucks, but these are you know active noise canceling. They're really really good for a hundred bucks. I'm very very impressed by them. And I went and got the. Um, but if I want to get you to a better, are you are you using them now? I'm not using them right now. Okay, good. All right. <laughs> Whatever you're using, don't buy that. <laughs> no, I'm just on a phone. Oh, there you see. You see. Very good. Very good sound. The sound cores are good. You know, Soundcore is a newer um, audio brand f founded by uh, Anchor, and I think that they've yeah. done some really good stuff. And what what it really brings home is how overpriced headphones are. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's a huge profit margin. Well, Apple spent $3.2 billion to buy Beats. And honestly, I think they knew they'd make it all back in the first year because the, the profit margin on headphones has to be 90%. Yeah. Anyway. These, these are quite good. And just a quick Mad Magazine story. I was probably about 11 years old at Midway Airport in Chicago. Yeah. And I saw this guy walking in the bathroom, long white hair, long white beard. I said, is that William Gaines, the publisher of Mad oh Magazine? My. And he, you know, I don't know, walked, I was sitting at the gate, and he walked out, and as he walked out, there was toilet paper <laughs> on his shoe. And I said, yeah, that's William Gaines. Definitely Bill Gaines. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell Dick about it. Hey, a pleasure talking to you, Michael. Thank you for the uh, endorsement. You know, it's always good to get a second opinion. Anthony's on the line from Diamond Bar, California. Hi, Anthony. Hey, Leo. Happy Labor Day weekend. How are you? I'm great. Happy Labor Day weekend to you, too. It's a scorcher out there. Stay cool. What's it, what is it like in the Diamond Bar right now? Uh, we're about 110. Doy! That's I, uh, unbelievable. <laughs> was going to do uh, a smoker this weekend, but I think if I go outside, I'll be smoking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the more inland you get, I guess the worse it gets. And how, Has it been cooling off at night? Uh, if you call 85, 86. <laughs> oh, man. Well, I hope you could find somewhere to, to douse your uh, douse your heat. 
Absolutely, absolutely. Well, I appreciate you taking my call. I'm uh, looking for a screen recorder. Um, I uh, cover high school sports in my area, and uh, unfortunately, I can't get to, out to every game to cover with uh, my own personal camera. So I subscribe to a service. They stream the games, and uh, they've allowed me the opportunity to uh, screen grab the, uh, the, the game footage to create highlights out of them. And I'm just uh, asking you to find out what would be either the best uh, screen recorder, either free or paid. Uh, doesn't matter. You're on, you're on Windows, yeah? I'm on Apple. Oh, you're on Apple. Okay. Yes. Um, I think QuickTime will do it. I don't think you need to buy. So what are you playing it back on, a web page? It's on their, on their uh, yeah. it's kind of like the MLB.com. So you've opened a website. Yes. So you can, I mean, you already have a program called QuickTime uh, that will make a video recording of the screen, actually even the screenshot. So if you do Shift-Command-5, you know, Shift-Command-3, 4, and 5 do screenshots. Shift-Command-5 will let you record the screen. It'll even put up a little bar that says, oh, you don't want the whole screen. You just want a portion of the screen. I don't know if they'll let you go full screen. Uh, but it, it, will then, uh, it will then capture it and record it. I don't know if there's a time limit. This is probably, you want a couple hours, right? Well, I can go back and watch the uh, game on demand. Oh, okay. Time code, so I can just go to certain spots that I want those highlights and then queue it up. And so, then so that's the screen capture utility. If you have QuickTime Player on there, it will also record the screen. Both of those are free and come with Mac OS. There's certainly many third-party tools that will do this, too. But I'd start with those, see if they do a good job. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Now, it's a stream. We had I had to take a break, but it's a stream, okay. which means you are in fact downloading it. The only difference between a stream and a download is it throws away the packets after it plays them on a stream. So there are programs that will let you, ca as you capture those packets, save them. And that will give you the exact uh, file that they're playing back. So oh, okay. that's not even that's not screen capture. That's downloading. Um, I'm surprised. You should ask them. Can I just download this? Sometimes the player will have a download button. Are, are they playing it back on YouTube or where are they sending it? They're they're using their own uh, their own thing website platform, and they are actually developing a, a console where you can go in there and screen grab and cut and take what you want. But if right they're now, using, if they're using something like JW player, which is what we use, there are a lot of good players out there. They can turn on downloads, but if they don't, then you can get a program that will do it the, on the Mac. It's not free, but it's great. It's called Downy D O W N I E. And essentially what that does is you tell Downy, okay, here's the URL of the, you know, here's the, it's only 20 bucks. Here's the, uh, here's the file. I mean the uh, URL of the of the video, capture it, and and then and then inst as you're streaming, instead of just throwing the packets away, it just saves them all and makes a video you can play back anytime, and it it'll do it in 4K and everything. It works with YouTube, works with almost everything. I would try downloading it and see if it works. You could try it for free, see if it works uh, with that stream, and if it does, that's going to give you the full quality. Wow, it's perfect. They again, they they told me they're going to be releasing that feature. Soon, but. Yeah, I mean, they, they're the ones who are turning it off. <laughs> Believe me, it's built in to whatever player they're using. There's a checkbox that says, you want to allow people to download it? Got so. it. So their their answer was, oh, you can always just do a screen recording. But I'll try Downey and see if that works out. If I, not, I'll do QuickTime. I think Downey's a good choice. There's another, it's a little more expensive. Tector makes a program called Snagit that will do it. It's it's uh, much more expensive, but, uh, you know, there's some other choices. There's quite a few. Snag, it's uh, 63 bucks. Okay. I've tried Downey. Everybody I know uses Downey. Andy Anako recommended that a few months ago on uh, MacBreak Weekly, so that's the one I would try. Awesome. Well, thank you so much again for your time, and uh, have a great holiday weekend. My my pleasure. Thank you. You too. Tech Smith. Did I say Tech Dirt? Yeah, Tech Smith. Not Tech Dirt. I got tech dirt on the brain. That's what I get. That tells you right now. Hey, you know who brings us this show? I'll tell you who brings us this show. The great folks at IT Pro TV. IT Pro TV. I met these guys years ago. Don Pezet and uh, 
Tim Broom, they were IT trainers in a classroom, traditional setting. And they said, we would like to do what you're doing with Twit. We would like to do that for IT training. And, and IT Pro TV was born. And wow, <laughs> they have done what we did and exceeded it. They have, in fact, we went out and visited their uh, studio in Gainesville when they opened those up. Seven studios producing content Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. What is it? 10 hours a day of content. Why are they doing so much? Because when you're doing IT training, you got to give people the latest. And that's something you're not going to get if you go to a technical school or you buy books in a store, you go to the library. You're going to get old content often. IT Pro TV, it's, it's part of their offer. <laughs> it's part of what they give you. They're always up to date. Content goes from the studios into their library within 24 hours, and they always have the latest training, the most current content in every area of IT. IT Pro TV is, sure, like any IT school, designed for people who are getting into IT so they can get those initial certifications, so they can get that first job. But it goes much farther than that. It's also for IT professionals who want to keep their skills up, get new skills, recertify. It is literally the best IT training for your IT career, whether you're just starting out or you're a long-term veteran. And, and part of the thing that makes it so great is the people they choose to teach. These are experts in the field who are working IT professionals. So they're up to date because they're dealing with this right, you know, on the they're on the front lines. But they're so passionate. They love what they're doing so much that it makes it fun, entertaining. They even call them edutainers. Virtual labs, yes, so you can set up Windows servers and clients without having even a Windows machine. Just do it in your browser. Practice tests so you can take the exam before you take the exam. It's the best way to get ready. They have uh, classes in every area of IT, Microsoft, Cisco, you know, the big certs, Apple, security, the certified ethical hacker training, 5,800 hours of up-to-date IT training in their library. Every episode, you know, they'll do whole courses, but within the course, it's episodes, and every episode's just about half an hour, a little less sometimes. So it's very easy to watch it, you know, bit by bit at your convenience, and you can watch it everywhere. They've got a uh, app for browsers. You can watch on your computer. You can watch on a tablet. You can watch on your phone. You can watch on Apple TV. You can watch on Roku. You can listen to it. So you can, you know, at your convenience on a lunch break or while you're going to work, that kind of thing, you can get learn and learn and learn. It's really incredible. One reviewer said, it's easy to understand what they're saying. It's well explained. I, I'd agree with that. And the classes are very smooth along with their the notes and the transcription. I forgot to mention that. So you don't have to take notes. You've got a transcription and all the notes because they're not trying to trick you. They're trying to teach you, right? By wrapping their own experience in with the course because they're pros, it makes it easier to comprehend even the hardest topics. They also make sure you feel confident enough to pass the exams. That's a review you can read right on the site. Also, another reviewer says, best website to study IT and cybersecurity related courses. I like the part where they make a few courses free for a weekend. They're doing it again this month. Microsoft Free Weekend, September 17th and 18th. Microsoft Free Weekend, September 17th and 18th. So there's a variety of ways you can see if you like it, but I'm telling you, it's affordable. It's, it's better than any other way of learning these skills. They have a free live webinar coming up on September 15th. That's a Thursday. All Things Cybersecurity with Daniel Lowry and John Strand. That's going to be great. That's 2 p.m. Eastern. If you want to be there live, it's nice because you can ask questions, but then they make it available on demand uh, for the rest of the month. So don't forget about your IT team too, by the way. I should always mention this. We always talk about individuals, but they have team learning, a great dashboard, great for any business that wants to keep their IT team up to, up to snuff. And the teams love it. Because it's, I mean, it's a great benefit as well for them. Get 30% off right now when you sign up at itpro.tv slash twit. Use the offer code twit30, twit30. And as you might expect, that gets you 30% off. itpro.tv slash twit, offer code twit30. Love these guys. That'll work too for a uh, business account. So mention that to your account exec. Twit30. IT Pro TV, build or expand your IT career. And enjoy the journey. Thank you, IT Pro TV, for supporting the Tech Guy. Uh, and don't forget, if you're a Tech Guy listener, you support us by using that address so they know you saw it here. ITPro.tv slash twit. It's a 
twit offer code, okay? ITPro.tv slash twit. Now back to the show. Well, hey, 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 how are you today? Leo Laporte here, the tech guy. We're going to talk computers, the internet, home theater, digital photography. We talk a lot about cybersecurity. If you've got questions, if you've got concerns, if you want to know more, this is the place. 8888-ASK-LEO is the phone number. 888-827-5536. Toll free from anywhere in the U.S. or Canada. If you are outside that area, you can still call, but you got to use Skype out or something like that. It should be toll free. 8888-ASK-LEO. Website, techguylabs.com. Uh, we put stuff there because you're listening, you're driving around, you're enjoying your weekend, and last thing I'd want you to do is have to pull over and write something down, right? So uh, that's why we put it up on the website, so you don't have to do that. Techguylabs.com. That's free. There's uh, no sign-up. Just uh, head on over there, and uh, you'll find all the links. You'll find a transcript of the show. After it takes a little while, we got somebody's got to write that uh, audio and video from the show as well. Techguylabs.com. Joe on the line from Orlando, Florida. Our next caller. Hi, Joe. Yes. Hello. Thank you, uh, for taking my call. Of course, Joe. Thanks for calling. I appreciate it. Yeah, in fact. Uh, I run a, I uh, was telling the lady there that uh, we run a program here at the University of Central Florida for young middle school kids. We're trying to, we're teaching them Python by flying drones. Awesome. I want to yeah. take that class. <laughs> That's fantastic. We have a website called the, it's a nonprofit. We run a nonprofit group called the T-H-E try T-R-I group G-R-O-U-P dot com. And you'll see that there's a video there where, uh, we show the drones anyway, but uh, it's for middle schools primarily. We do have a few high schools. We, so we kind of, with the high school kids, they're so into social media and all the video stuff, and it's kind of hard to keep them engaged in the program. So with these middle school kids, we're actually going to be uh, giving them some awards and also some prizes later on. We do provide them with a, a drone they can practice at home with. Oh, that's we, cool. These are small drones. Actually, they're using that. We're teaching them how to use the drones to go up on the roof and check out solar panels to make sure there's no, you know, nesting or uh, damage and so on. So that's one of the applications they're going to be using. And uh, and uh, we're, we're uh, in the, where we live, there's 500 homes. It's a community here, and and uh, quite a few of them have solar panels. And that way, also, these kids can earn some money by go, going and maintaining some of these, helping these, uh, the neighbors here with their... Joe, that's kids. that's so... Is this Joe Ramos? Yeah. This that's is so cool. So you're, this is your this is your company, the TRI Group. And right. I love this because, you know, it's a great thing for kids to learn coding. It's actually a, a discipline that not only... If, if, even if they don't ever go in the industry... It, like math, it teaches them logical thinking, process. It, it, uh, it's a good discipline. It's just a wonderful thing to learn. And, and, but the problem is it's a little dry if, you know, you're just... Remember in, uh, in our day, the kids were learning uh, turtle graphics with logo. They would make turtles draw... That's what I started my poor kids with, with logo back there when they were in school. Because that gave them something fun. And and it gave them a, a physical reality with their coding. I think that's important for kids. Drones even better. <laughs> I love yeah. that. I we love have, that. I, I, my grandchildren. I got four uh, four children and grandchildren. And my grandchildren were, were using uh, robots going through a maze. But th that was fun at the beginning. But after a while, they got bored. Uh, yeah. But with a drone. We have an optical course of both years at the, year at the year, UCF. Uh, I, I, this is an extension campus. Uh, actually, I'm here in, uh, about 20 miles uh, west uh, of Orlando in between here in Tampa. It looks and, like uh, you teach these kids all kinds of stuff. I think this is wonderful. And they're not just using Python. They're using Blockly and Scratch, other, other uh, yeah. tools, so that they can... Yeah, Logo was the first one we started. That was developed at MIT. As you're right, right. And then Scratch is also from MIT. And uh, so, like I said, I taught my kids that. And I, I, 
And uh, I, st- I was at UCLA in 1969 when we were given, we were, uh, I became assistant analyst later on. And now I work pro bono trying to help these kids. And, uh, and my kid and my four kids also contribute when they got time. One's a software engineer for Southwest. <laughs> That's one, great. One, my youngest son is one of the managers at Disney World. He, he was with the Pixar. He's an Imagineer. Oh my gosh. The best job ever. So one of the things about the, yeah, we tell these kids, look, here's what the future looks like. Our, our first step is trying to get them some basic coding. That's not our goal for them to become programmers. Our goal is to teach them how to uh, cybersecurity. And, uh, and, That's uh, good because they can then teach their parents. They're probably okay because they grew up in this, yeah. but their parents don't know nothing. <laughs> well, the, the, only, well, the only way they can enroll in the program is the parents has, one of the parents has to be sitting there with the kid in front of the computer when we're going through this stuff. It's all done virtually. Uh, online. And, yeah, that's uh, fair because you want to protect their privacy and the, you know all of that. So that's make sure the parents. Plus, it's great if the parents are along for the ride; uh, they'll be supportive and they might learn a few things. The kids get a lot more. Uh, what what do you call it? More engaged and yeah. more excited when they got the parents in right Absolutely. next to them. Absolutely. Yeah. So it's, we've like I said, I've been doing this since 1969 at UCLA. That's where I started and. Uh, and I've gone through this, and I've done done a lot. The last twenty years, I've been doing pro bono, pro bono work around the country, down at Bamboo Nation in Northern Arizona, and so on, and so on. Anyway, so I've got a lot of experience dealing with young kids. I've got my own computer lab. If you, if you look at that website, you'll see a poster, first poster where it shows UCF uh, uh, being uh, winning the. Uh, 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 they compete nationally with major universities and, and the world later on. That's great. The trigroup.com, the T R I group.com. The T R is Tapia Ramos. The I is my mother's initial, Isadora. Oh. So it's a tribute to Isadora, your mom. Yeah, my mom. We were oh. seven of us. And we were, uh, she was a single parent. My dad left us when we were young. And of course, that. I'm being the oldest. I kind of forced me to. You were the and, dad. Yeah. Yeah. I did really well in high school. And then, of course, transferred to UCLA. But there's a lot. Let me tell you here's a little bit of history. Jeff Bezos was born in my, my hometown of South Africa, New Mexico. And that's where Jeff Bezos was born in 1964. His mother, Jackie, and I were in high school at the same time. Two different high schools. But uh, I was out for cash years at Highland. Anyway, so. And then, of course, Microsoft started there in '74 with Bill Gates. That's right. Alan. That's right. And, and that's not so. There's a lot of technology there in uh, Albuquerque. In the yeah. The, the, uh, God has given me some uh, unique situation. Miguel Bezos, who Jackie later may, married because Ted Tur- uh, Jorgensen was uh, Jeff's uh, uh, natural father, and he left him when he was like four. Yeah, five he years. was a, apparently a, a circus performer. On the unicycle. <laughs> well, well, he actually was running, well, he was on 60 Minutes a while back, about 10, 15 years ago. Uh, they, they interviewed him, uh, Jeff Bezos, and asked, where's your dad at? I said, I don't know. He left a long time ago. Anyway, so after that interview, the, the, the reporter went looking for his father. He oh, wow. In Phoenix, Arizona, running a bike shop. Yeah, yeah. And the same as Ted Jurgensen. Anyway, so now he, he's, uh, you know, Miguel and, and Jack, and so they... He's close to him here in Florida. He just passed away a couple of years ago. Uh, Ted Jorgensen. Uh, uh, well, I just I, I just want to uh, thank you and, and and congratulate you, Joe, because I think what you're doing is fantastic. That's paying it forward, taking the skills you learned over many years, and uh, and passing along to kids. And what I love, and by the way, kids not only grade school but in college. But but what I love is that you're making it fun for them, and yeah. uh, and and I I have noticed. People who learn about technology in a fun way are much better at it and stick with it uh, compared to people who learn it because they have to, because they have to do a word processor or a spreadsheet at work or whatever. They go kicking and screaming, and then they never really enjoy it. So I think making it fun for kids, doing code camps, doing drones, learning it uh, at any age um, in a way that, that makes you enjoy it is such a good way to start. I think that's great. You know, be, you know, situation with math drops out a couple of years, and we're 25th in the world. So we tie in our programming, our coding uh, uh, with math. 
Yes. Yes. We, we, yes. We set up an optical course in the gym, and then that, and then they'll fly the drones with visual and manual control. And they say it takes 15 minutes to go to the optical course. And now we give them the specs on how that whole optical course is set up. So now they got to program it. They got to figure out how to add, you know, and so on, and take angles and so on and so on. So they're learning math at the same time. Absolutely. <laughs> You're learning logic. You're learning uh, uh, how to work. You're learning skills that are beyond coding that are so fantastic. I think this is actually the future of math curricula uh, in high schools is is learning to code. In fact, there's some very good projects, including uh, my favorite, one of my favorite programming languages. The folks who do Racket have uh, also a curriculum for high school teachers uh, in, in getting them coding. Joe, well done. The TRI group dot com the tri group dot com eighty eight eighty eight ask leo that's the phone number more of your calls coming up in just a little bit and yes mads maddest writer dick d bartolo will be here too with another junky gadget it's all ahead stay tuned Bootstrap is the um, the racket thing that I was talking about. And I think this is, if you're a high school teacher and you're looking at uh, uh, curricula for teaching program or teaching math, really as a math teacher, using programming, this is a very, very good way to do it. And they have curricula, they have workshops. It's all free. It's bootstrap, bootstrapworld.org, bootstrapworld.org. Uh, and the idea is very much to, like what Joe's doing uh, is get kids excited ab about this stuff, making it fun and interesting. And then it's a great way to learn uh, math, rigor, logic, that kind of thing. Really neat stuff. Yeah, in this case, Bootstrap World is uh, is using Racket to teach. It's a functional language. It's, it's a scheme. Yeah, Lego's good too. And there are, you know, um, I interviewed and have been promoting for some time uh, learning Python using Minecraft. There's a great book um, from the uh, No Starch Press, I think. I interviewed the author. Learn to program with Minecraft. Um, it turns out uh, you can get a Raspberry Pi with Minecraft and a plugin that lets you use Python to do stuff in Minecraft, and it's awesome. <laughs> it's really amazing. Since kids are already, you know, really a lot of kids still very much into Minecraft, uh, it gives them a way to do stuff in Minecraft using programming so they get immediate feedback. It's really, it's really fun. And Microsoft, because of Microsoft's all about uh, Minecraft and education, they offer a plug-in, a Python plug-in and so forth that lets you do this. There's lots of ways. It's funny that uh, Joe started with a logo, of course. Those were the days. Yeah, I mean, EdTech is fantastic. Uh, probably not not a show for me or us, but that's the beauty of podcasting. Uh, you know, there are I'm sure there are EdTech shows out there. Leo, I better stop this right here. Leo Laporte, the tech guy, 8888. Ask Leo Randy on the line from Huntington Beach, California. Hello, Randy. Hello, Mr. Margarine. Oh, Leo. Oh, I get it. Oh, my. You know what? Yeah. That that's the first time I've ever heard that. Very good. Congratulations. I think that's good. 
Well, thank you. I have two questions, and, and then I have a not very long and not particularly sorrowful story. Uh-oh. But the, the first question is, which laptop manufacturers give you the best bang for the buck? And secondly, which laptop manufacturers don't solder in RAM? Oh, well. Um, my, my assumption is you can't add more RAM where it's soldered in. I figured it was going to be an easy thing. I bought a, a Lenovo i5 Flex, a 15-inch screen. It's got an NVMe, 7th generation um, i7. Um, the touch screen is not real responsive, but what I found is when I'm mixing music, I've, I've got a friend who's a producer who flies in periodically, that we're peaking the machine, and the music starts crackling. And he says, well, you just need, the more, you need to add more RAM. And I'm going, well, I don't what? think I can. Uh, so, it, and it never did that with, I have an i5 that I was using with a lot more RAM. And um, The reason that they solder RAM in these days is because we are demanding from them thinner, lighter, cheaper computers, right? So yeah. uh, thinner and lighter is usually incompatible with upgradable. So for years, uh, Dell used to have a little uh, hatch on the bottom of their computer. You wouldn't even have to open up the computer to put in more RAM. They just opened the hatch, uh, and there was the there was a place to put in more RAM sticks. Dell still sells some computers that uh, have upgradable RAM. I have a XPS 15 sitting in front of me. This 2022 XPS 15, I believe you can add RAM to. It's not soldered in, but the XPS 13. I'm being told by a computer surgeon. <laughs> Sounds like he's done this. He says the XPS 13 does have the RAM soldered in. So even from the same manufacturer, sometimes, you know, you just have to check and see if it's RAM upgradable, you know. You might, the other place you could go probably is the RAM sites, places like Crucial.com where they have a RAM picker where you can figure out what kind of memory you can buy to put in your computer. And then if you're considering a model, just see if, if they sell RAM for it. Because if they don't, I bet you that's because it's not upgradable. None of Apple's current laptops are upgradable. Uh, that's an even worse case. It's not soldered in. It's built into the pr the chip, the die. Uh, the M1 dies and now the M2 dies have the, they call it unified RAM. And there's an advantage to that. The memory is on the chip, which means it can be accessed much, much more quickly. Yeah. The disadvantage yeah. is it can't be upgraded. So uh, there are trade-offs, I guess. Uh, generally, yeah, nowadays, if you're buying... Manufacturers, right? Yeah, yeah. If, yeah, if, if you're buying a laptop, it's probably smart to get it with the configuration you want, not assume you'll be able to put more memory into it. And that actually, not just memory, but storage as well. Increasingly, that's becoming hard. So... Uh, you know, it's certainly it's the case with in any Apple product. Buy it with the RAM and hard drive size you're gonna you want because you're, that's probably all you're gonna ever be able to do. Um, now, you ask for the best manufacturer with the best bang for your buck. Uh, everybody offers low cost uh, stuff. Acer, A C E R, has mm -hmm. always tried to keep their costs really low, and I think they make decent products. You know, usually inexpensive means you're not going to get the top quality components and so forth. But Acer, which for a long time did have a low-cost junkie line, stopped doing that. They called it their consumer grade. Most, In fact, it's important, I think, when you're buying laptops to kind of understand most manufacturers offer consumer laptops and professional laptops. Dell is a good example. The Latitude is kind of their consumer line. The XPS is kind of their higher end pro line and it's very much a price divide i get in trouble because i have said many times saving money on technology is often counterproductive uh because you buy something too cheap it's either not upgradable or it's it's just not well made it's going to fall apart it ends up in a way costing you more because you're going to get another laptop in a year so I don't know if you look at an, it's a false economy to go too at an cheap. MSI Prestige. Those are very nice. Uh, my my uh, friend Aunt Pruitt, who does our photography show, loves his MSI laptops. Um, MSI is going to be less expensive because they're not a huge brand name. They're known more for components. They make make motherboards uh, and right. and video cards, but they got recently got into the laptop business, and I think they make quite good laptops. The Prestige is very nice. The only thing I would say maybe to be aware of is I'm looking at the Prestige 15. 
it is the uh, 11th generation Intel processor, not the, the new 12th generation. And that's probably for reasons of economy, but I, I, if you're getting a laptop today, I might look for a 12th generation. This uh, Dell XPS 15 in front of me is 12th generation Intel processor. And this is a Prestige 14, and I, it, I can't tell if the RAM is upgradable or not. It's about $1,200, $1,300. That's not a bad, that's, um, you know, I, as long as you see, when you say affordable, sometimes I think people want a laptop for three or $400 and you're not going to get a good laptop at that price. I'm sorry. You just not $1,300, anything over a thousand, you should get a good laptop. That should be fine. Does, do touch pads vary in quality across manufacturers as well? Yes, very much so. That's another, oh. that's a, that's a big component where a low cost laptop will have a plastic a trackpad that isn't very responsive or very good. The more expensive yeah. laptops will have glass trackpads. Some of them will have haptic feedback, so when you click it, it buzzes at you. Y yes, absolutely. Uh, Synaptics is the manufacturer for most trackpads, but they have a low-end line as well as a high-end line. So yes, and that's, you know, anything you spend a lot of time using, that's important, like your keyboard, your trackpad. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. MSI is not new, but they're new. Uh, I think they're new in laptops. But I, but uh, Ant loves his MSI, so I would not hesitate to get a Prestige. I think that's probably a good. Yeah, and I don't know how you'd find out. Let me look and see if I can figure out if the Prestige has uh, soldered in RAM. Just Prestige get, 14 Evo. Just get just get the um, just get the uh, RAM you want now. You know. Yeah, this one I think has 32. Oh, that's plenty. You're not going to want more than that. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. of course, always, you know, as the years go by, you know, it becomes more common to have more RAM. But then there's other parts of it that are old and out of date as well. So if you get 32 yeah. today, I think you're fine. I think you're fine. Yeah. Yeah, I think the... the Prestige is in their business the series. So let me look at the 14... Evo, that's why the, it's Evo, because that's a, that's a, that's Intel's kind of business uh, line. But this is a 12th gen, which is nice. So that's a good start. Right. right. Let me look and see. Yeah, it's so thin. I wonder if you're going to have upgradable RAM. 32, though, you'll never need to upgrade that. I mean... Yeah, I'm not sure I need more than 32. No, no, no. That'll be fine. I wouldn't... I thought with an i7, 16 would be fine. But yeah. It, and the 12th gens are good. You know... The idea of the 12th gen, they've added these efficiency cores, is in theory they're going to give you better uh, battery life. Um, oh, this this, cool. this uh, Dell XPS that I have is a uh, 12th gen, and I think it is actually better battery life, but I'm seeing also benchmarks that show it's not, so I don't, I really don't know. Um, I got an i5 because I wanted better battery life, and I knew the i7 would probably yeah. have worse battery life. So you have to decide that you always are deciding. You know, what What are the trade-offs? Every laptop has lots of trade-offs. Yeah, back in the Meg Whitman days, I had a laptop and a, a <laughs> desktop that were both HPs, and both of them had, had motherboards that died. Yeah, I was not a fan of HP in, in that era at all. They also loaded them up with junkware. I mean, they had more crapware yeah. than anyone else in the business. But they've gotten much better since they split with HPE. No, no, I think they've got... I like the new HP laptops are fantastic, the... The Elite's beautiful. Um, I had a Spectre for a long time I really liked. Uh, yeah, I don't know how you would find is out. Is better than the Evo? Uh, the Prestige, you mean? No, I think the Prestige is a good choice. This looks good. Okay. Um, Ant's been very happy with his MSI. I keep saying, are you still happy with it? And he says, yeah. That was his choice. You know, we were going to, you know, he could get anything he wanted. Most of our uh, staff gets Macs. But he uh, he wanted a, a Windows PC though, so he was very happy. I had a good thing happen. I I bought this um, Lenovo from Costco, and it, it was kind of working, but I didn't like the, uh, the uh, touchpad, so I used a mouse. And then I learned that it's not upgradable, so it's it's a hundred five days past a ninety day warranty at Costco, and they said just bring it in. They're so good. You can swap it out. They are so good. I don't know how they yes. I've heard this again and again. They're very generous in their returns. So I think a good choice. You're not always going to get the latest thing, but if they have this prestige uh, and it's got the uh, 12th gen, yep. 
good place to get it. Cool. Yeah. Thank you very much. You're welcome. I'm going to bet it does not have upgradable RAM. Just looking at how thin it is, I'd, I'd be very surprised if it does. Yeah, with 32, that should do it. Oh yeah. With one terabyte. Oh god, yeah. I you're imagine. not gonna put, you're not gonna put more RAM in it. No. I imagine that's got to be an NVMe, right? Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. So that would be upgradable in theory if you can get into it. Yeah. Go to iFixit.com. They they will have uh, you know they have all the videos on repairability. They have repairability scores. This is brand new. They might not yet have it, but I wouldn't be surprised. Now this this I can get behind. <laughs> Leo Laporte, the tech guy. I've I've seen Joan Jett recently, actually, but I'm looking forward to seeing her again. Professor Laura is taunting me. Because because I'm going to a concert on Wednesday with my wife, who loves these bands, to see Joan Jett, Poison, Def Leppard, and Motley Crue. And so she's been torturing me with her music all day. <laughs> That's quite enough, Professor Laura. 8888 Ask Leo Dicti Bartolo, Mad's Maddest Writer, coming up in just a little bit. But first we go to Denver, Colorado, to say hello to Bambi. Hi, Bambi. Hello. Welcome. Thank you. I have two questions. One short. Okay. When you mentioned that iPhone's coming out, are they coming out with the 14 mini? Ah, bad news. For those of you who like little iPhones, no mini this year. The mini did not sell well in the iPhone 12. They continued to make it in the 13. I have a good friend uh, who uh, does our Mac Break Weekly uh, show. Jason Snell, he's a sixcolors.com guy. He's a mini fan. He likes the little phones. And like you, I guess, he's not happy. No mini this year. Aw. Aw. Okay. The second question is, um, I have someone that makes DVDs and puts photos on them. Nice. And we want to make it so that it, um, it cannot be copied. She has a burner. And, but she doesn't want it to be copied so that other got, other people can just go and copy it. But She's out of luck. Software it, so you can't do that? Well, I figure Hollywood had the biggest investment in not having their commercial DVDs copied, and they failed. So I'm, I'm going to guess that anything you could buy or do, you're out of luck. If she doesn't want those photos, if, you know, I have to say this is a problem for all photographers. Is she a photographer? No, she's not. But Are they her images? She, it, yeah, so they're they're. What she does is when someone dies, oh. um, someone will put, someone will give her the pictures and she'll make a DVD. Oh, of them that's and nice. They're awesome. Yeah. But some people are wanting copies of them, and that's fine. But she doesn't want, she doesn't, because she doesn't charge for this, so she doesn't want people to just go and make copies and copies and copies. Yeah, I don't blame her. She's willing to yeah. give it to that person. So we're, we're wanting to protect what she's doing because she's doing an awesome job. Well, yeah, but she's not charging for it. And it costs her money to make them. I would think she'd be happy if somebody would go out and make 100 copies for everybody in the family. I mean, I don't want to talk her out of it, but it's very, it's, oh, it's not possible. Hollywood tried very hard to make, you know, when you go out and buy a Top Gun DVD, Hollywood has put copy protection on it, which was broken by a high school kid within weeks and has been ever since easily defeated. So, uh, you know, you could, I mean, you, you, you can buy something that'll make it hard, but if somebody wants to get a, make a copy of it, they can. I guess it's just casual, casual copying. Okay. I mean, the problem with also with copy protecting DVDs is it's going to add to her burden of tech support because some people are going to say, oh, um, I can't play this in player XYZ because of the copy protection and she's going to have to help. And that she probably doesn't want to do either. So, you, yeah, I mean, you can secure a uh, DVD uh but, uh, you know, buying something called CD Shield or Crip Key, she's going to be out some money. It's not going to stop a determined attacker, and she's going to have to support it if somebody can't play it back because that's on there. Yeah, she bought one that you needed a password, but then you even needed a password just to play the thing. Yeah, exactly. And she didn't want to do that. Yeah. yeah. All, all, every copy protection scheme out there, every 
every copy protection scheme out there has two major failings. One, bad guys can get around it. They always can. They can figure out how to get around it. Two, it inconveniences honest users. So in my opinion, and I've said this so many times, but nobody listens, copy protection is a terrible idea because it criminalizes the people who are paying for your product, your honest users. It teaches them how to become pirates, and it does not it's not even a speed bump for the real pirates. They get around it instantly. And if you wonder, just Google copy DVD and you'll see how easy it is to get around it. This is true of all copy protection. So I would I think it's a wonderful thing she's doing. She's doing it pro bono anyway. She's doing it for free. If somebody wants to copy, the only people who would want to copy it are are loved ones, right? Of the you know, bereaved. So let them, you know, let them make copies. It takes a burden off of her. And the last thing she wants to do is send something out with a password or something that won't play in some players. So then she has to, you know, that's that's no fun. That's no fun. Uh, but I I honor her for what she's doing. I mean, that's that's a really nice thing to do. I will put just, uh, you know, for completeness sake, I will put in the show notes um, how to copy protect a DVD, <laughs> how to make one. It requires a commercial product. Um, another way you could do this is if she didn't send out DVDs. These, and she'll know better her customers, her audience. Uh, you know, D, a lot of people don't have DVDs anymore. Computers aren't sold with DVD players. Most people now stream shows. They don't play back DVDs. It's an old and dying format. She may prefer to make these shows available on a USB key or even online. Uh, now, you'll have the same problem with it's easy to copy. Although you could, I guess, if you didn't, if you wanted to, you could encrypt the uh, USB key and say, well, you need a password to play it back. So you could effectively prevent people from playing it back. But it would be a, annoying because <laughs> everybody has to enter a password. Uh, I think putting it online might be the best thing. Creating a website, you can do all of the animations she's doing, the menus, the, all of that, the music. She could do all of that and put it online. And then you don't have to worry about it being copied. It's available to anyone who wants it. Burke in our chat room says, it's easy. You just label them, do not copy. <laughs> Out of respect for the, uh, the, the our dearly beloved, do not, <laughs> do not make a copy. You know, that, that probably just is effective. That's probably just as effective. Um, why wouldn't you want everybody to have it, I think? You know, if somebody cares about that person and uh, and they want those images and you've made a beautiful thing that you want everybody to have, uh, why not let them copy it? This is a problem, in fact, in general with copy protection. Is it's, It just doesn't work. The, uh, the story of the DVD uh, is actually kind of amazing. Um, They released the DVD format with something called CSS. It's a copy protection system. Hollywood did not want, they were terrified. If we put this, if we put Top Gun out on a DVD, you know, people are just going to make copies of it and we're going to lose all our sales. So they put CSS on it. Uh, a high school student <laughs> uh, named John Lech Johansson, he was a Norwegian kid, within, I think, within a month of the release of the DVD format, released DCSS, a program to remove the copy protection, defeated it, like instantly. He was taken to court for computer hacking. This is back in the early 2000s. He was prosecuted by the Norwegian National Authority for the Investigation and Prosecution of Economic and Environmental Crime after a complaint from the DVD Copy Control Association and the Motion Picture Association. Uh... The defense argued no illegal access was obtained to anyone else's information. He only broke the copy protection on DVDs he owned himself. He was acquitted on all charges. Uh, they, they appealed, acquitted, never, ever was convicted. So he's known ever since. He's been known as DVD John. And it's, a, I think, an object lesson for people who try to put copy protection on things. There's a high school kid out there who's going to break it in weeks. 
Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Hello, Dickity. Hello, Leo Laporte. Hello, my friend. <laughs> How are you today, sir? I am good, and you? I am good. Now you're not. Uh, your your heat wave's over, right? Yes. Yeah. Ours Today has just like, begun. Oh no! And well, how hot is hot? Well, it's not hot right now here, but uh, in Sherman Oaks, how hot is it, Laura? In uh, Sherman Oaks, it's like over a hundred, I think. Oh. It's only eighty nine here. In the inland area of uh, California, it's getting up into the hundred tens. Oh. oh my gosh! I know, I know. It's 103 wow. in Glendale. Yeah, so as you go I inland, and it's going to be worse. That it's going to peak on Monday, Labor Day. So, oh. <laughs> yes. Well, a thousand degrees in hell. Yeah, that's pretty hot. It's, yeah, it's better. Yeah. It's better well, they're used that. to it it's, down there. So they're they, used to, and also there's no humidity. It's a dry heat. It's a dry heat. <laughs> <laughs> that's, it's very dry. That's a great. That's yeah. a great thing about the devil. He's. <laughs> He's a dry fella. <laughs> he, he's a dry very dry. sense of humor. Yeah. <laughs> uh, if you're extra bad, then they put you in the room with the, humi uh, the humidity oh, room. <laughs> oh, the humidity room. That's a terrible, <laughs> terrible fate. There's a fate worse than death. Well, you're yeah, dead. You're yeah, exactly. Dead, so. uh, let's see. Giz, whiz, dot, biz. Oh, and we're, uh, it's a new What the Heck Is It? Oh, oh, I wonder what it yeah. was the last time. Did you know what it was? I did not. Oh. I did not. Oh, you are so good at coming that... up with crap. Oh, it's a toilet paper thing. Yeah, but you know what? I like it. I mean, you have to take it down when company comes because it looks ridiculous. What is what but is, <laughs> what is it, it? It's a way to hang those mega rolls oh, on your existing toilet paper no, roll. No, don't do Hold mega the, rolls. What do you? What do you? <laughs> mega. No, I bought them by accident, <laughs> and and they don't fit in anything. So this little device lets them <laughs> coexist with a, a mega, regular paper roll. A mega, you're making a statement there. Somebody uses your bathroom. You go, boy. There's something going on in here. Yeah. <laughs> he needs a mega roll. Uh we uh we uh we have those uh those Japanese toilets. You don't even need toilet paper. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah. And because we have a uh this is probably too much information, but because we have a uh, uh we're off we're a septic tank, you know, we have our own sewage septic tank. Oh yes, yes. We don't right. want to you know, less toilet paper is better, so Oh, okay. Okay. Apparently, I don't know if this is going to be good news or bad news, there's a giant mm -hmm. solar flare <laughs> building up. If you go to spaceweather.com, <laughs> there's a giant K-type solar flare aimed straight at the planet Earth. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Wait a minute. Yeah. This can't Headed be. toward Petaluma. Headed what? toward... <laughs> uh, a, it's, this, this, it's September 3rd. Oh, today. On September 3rd, a crack opened in the Earth's magnetic field and solar wind poured in. Wow. <laughs> sparking an unexpected G1-class geomagnetic storm. Hmm, the storm is over now, but oh, another could begin soon. Oh, that's why I have no paper clips left. <laughs> Here we go. <clears throat> now this is music. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, he's dancing in. Come on in, Dick. It's okay. On our lighted floor. He's wearing his satin <laughs> shirt open to the waist. He's got the satin pants on and the platform white boots. Disco Dick D. Bartolo. Look at him spin. Hey, Dickie D. Come <laughs> on in. Thank you. Whoa. I'm oh. out of breath. Woo. You are I a have dancing. To keep spinning. Otherwise, my boots don't like. <laughs> I like the light up boots. Yeah. Uh, 
Dick, besides being a disco fool, is Mad Magazine's maddest writer for the last five decades. He's been in every issue of Mad Magazine. He's also our very own gizmo wizard. We call him the Giz Wiz because he joins us each week to talk about a gizmo or a gadget. Did you hear earlier in the show, guy called in, big fan of yours, big fan of Mad oh. Magazine. He says when he was 12, I think it was in the Chicago airport, he saw a rotund fellow with a big white beard going into the men's room. He said, I think that's, I think that's Bill Gaines, publisher in, of Mad Magazine. And uh, moments later, Bill emerged from the uh, men's room with toilet on his, paper on his shoes. <laughs> And he said, oh, now I know it's Bill Gates. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's very It's a funny. good kid story. Uh, you wrote the funny. definitive book about uh, MAD in its uh, early days, Good Days in MAD, and lots of stories about Bill Gaines in that. Is that still, do you still have copies of that on your website? Uh, I, I have like, I think I have three copies left. Oh, hurry. You're going to, don't yes. delay. This is a great <laughs> book to own. I have two copies, a paperback and a hardcover. Thanks, to, and I'm both autographed by you, Dick. Thank you. Uh, but if you're no a mad problem. fan or you know somebody who is, three copies left. This is it. Get in there and get it. Dick ha uh, sells it on his website, gizwiz.biz. The other things, the other thing he does is our gizmo of the day. Click the button that says the gizwiz visits the tech guy. What do we have for today, Dick? Uh, well, we have two gadgets you may not know about. Oh, no, that can't be. Do you know about friction pens? No, friction? No. Yes, friction pens. Well, this no. is at the new product show, and I and I said to the lady, first of all, how do you pronounce that name? Because they spelt with an X. She said F it's friction, oh. and it's pens with erasable ink. And I oh. said, well, can, can I try that? You mean and like a pencil? Well, no, it's a it's a ballpoint pen. It's from Pilot. It's a ballpoint pen. You write in in ink, oh. and then she said, now flip it over. And you can erase, I drew my logo. She said, you can erase your logo and there will be no shavings or anything on the paper. Wow. And I said, well, how is that possible? And she said, it is friction. We use a thermal ink and the heat from the eraser actually dissolves the ink. What? Yes. It works really well. I like this and, idea. So there's no yeah. trace of the uh, ink. No tra No, no, no trace at all. What I'm what I'm thinking of is next time I get into public transportation, I'm going to have the Sunday crossword puzzle. Oh just, yeah, just fill in anything. You know, someone from afar <laughs> is not going to not going to know. And then when you get to the hotel, you can erase the things that was that was just nonsense. Micah Sargent, um, he says he has a ton of them. He loves them. Yeah. I was not aware and of this. All right. Neither, and they make a marker that also uses the same uh, uh, technology. And they're, depending on how many you buy, uh, mostly they're two bucks each. But if you buy like a big pack, it, it drops to about $1.60. Good. This will be useful so, for voting. Yeah. Now, does it, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> does it uh, fade over time, I wonder? I mean, how... You know, I have no idea. They're gel pens, which I happen to love because I like they, gel. They write, that's my favorite. Yeah, yeah they're smooth. Yeah, that yeah. they, they write very smooth. Yeah. Uh, so that's and then I have one other gadget that I never knew of. Do you know you know about the magnification lock from no. Master Lock? No. This is okay. this, this is for the old folks going back to school. Yes. Yes, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Uh so first of all, the numbers are bold. It's black. On white. Yes. Okay. And then the it's a magnifying lens that magnifies from straight on. So if you're looking from the side, like someone's trying to see your combination, the numbers are very blurred. So you can uh, hide the combination easily. Every number is a click. So you don't have to worry that you, you're not hitting the number dead on. Now, there is a downside and I didn't know it until I bought the lock, but I mean, it doesn't bother me, is it comes with its own combination. Oh, so I, you can't I, make up your I own. No, you can't make up your own. Oh. I emailed Master Lock and I said, how many are there? I hope there's more than one. Yes. <laughs> said, yeah, we have about 6,500 uh, You know, I bet why they do that is when you have to program your own padlock, it's hard. 
It's kind of yeah. A pain. You know, you're probably right. This, yeah. this is a, this is a very and they make a little pillow sticker in the back so you can stick it somewhere. Don't, don't put, it, put it on your locker. Put it on the bike. Yeah, uh, that's good. <laughs> yeah. Put it on the back of your wallet. Yeah, that's uh, a good idea. Uh, oh, that, yeah, and, and they're cheap. Because you know you, you can't know. make it your birthday or something. You have to go with whatever. How much are they? Yeah. Uh, eight bucks. Oh, nice. I, um, eight dollars. I, I looked right before the show. Eight dollars and 18 so cents. I usually think of, when I think of combination lock for a locker for kids, do, uh, yes. do older people use combination locks? I guess maybe if you go to the At gym. You might going to one? the gym if yeah. you have a job where where you have a locker where you leave your uniform. Oh, I didn't uh, even think of that. Sure, yeah. No, no, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. So old folk, uh, older folks like you and me. Yes. I don't mean to be yes. discriminatory because we're both senior citizens. Uh, we we also need uh, padlocks for various things. Yeah, so and good. and this is uh, I like this a lot. Nice. I, I changed uh, my my lock at the uh, warehouse to one of these. Wait a minute, you're using this at the gadget warehouse? Yeah. You think I mean, it's safe? People are gonna go in and just steal old stuff. <laughs> yeah, you're right. In fact, if I had the gadget warehouse, I'd leave the door open and say, "Come on yeah, in." Uh, yes, take something. Take something Please. free. <laughs> Look around and take something. <laughs> Dick's website is G-I-Z-W-I-Z -I -Z dot B-I-Z. He's the Gizwiz, the Gizmo Wizard. So it's Gizwiz dot biz. Uh, as I mentioned, you can uh, you can click the link to his mad memorabilia if you're a mad fan. You, I think now's the time to get that book, Good Days and Mad. Three left. Do you autograph them? Oh, yeah. Autograph to the person or whoever they want. Nice. I think that'd be a great. And you're planning yeah, ahead. Also, Christmas isn't that far off. Be a great holiday gift. Uh, Absolutely. Nice. You also, there's other stuff. There's uh, the things you show on this show. That's the Gizwiz Visits the Tech Guy. Products you show on ABC's World News Now. And if you click the button for What the Heck Is It, you can find out what the gadget was last time because August 31st was the last day. How many, how many correct guesses did you get? Only three. What okay, was it? But but more than a hundred people said something about toilet paper. It is a little gadget that hangs on to your current roll of toilet paper. Yeah. To hold a spare roll of toilet paper <laughs> or a mega roll that will not fit into the holder that is built into the wall in your home. I don't honestly in my house to if I had all these rolls, giant rolls of toilet, I think people would just assume there's something wrong with me uh, right. okay but if you need a lot of extra toilet paper this would be a good gadget three people got it right so those three got autographed mad magazines and then 16 people got uh, just you know for clever what was the what were the clever answers like oh uh yeah you hang this on the ears and you can hold the harmonica in front <laughs> of your mouth yeah that's good yeah, a harmonica. Uh, world's smallest closet light. P uh, people are very clever. People are very well, we got clever. a new one. It's a bariatric chamber for a Smurf. No, I gave it away again. <laughs> no, I don't know what You're it so is. You're so good at this. It looks like a, some sort of, uh, you know, Michael Jackson uh, anti-aging chamber, but I don't think that's what <laughs> it is. Can you guess? Go to gizwiz.biz. There'll be... Uh, Six up to six mad magazines for the right answer, up to 12 for the best wrong answer. And uh, this is going to go through the end of October through Halloween. So, this is your Halloween gadget. Thank you, Dickie D. Okay, buddy. I'll see you next Here's week. Here's whiz.biz. Thank you all for joining me. Be back next time. I hope you will too. Leo Laporte, I am your tech guy. Have a great geek week. Bye bye. Well, that's it for the Tech Guy Show for today. Thank you so much for being here. And don't forget, TWIT, T-W-I-T. It stands for This Week in Tech, and you'll find it at twit.tv, including the podcasts for this show. We talk about Windows on Windows Weekly, Macintosh on Mac Break Weekly, iPads, iPhones, Apple Watches on iOS Today, Security and Security Now. I mean, I can go on and on and on. And, of course, the big show every Sunday afternoon, This Week in Tech. You'll find it all at twit.tv. And I'll be back next week with another great Tech Guys show. Thanks for joining me. We'll see you next time.